Welcome to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. The celebration of Bowl Week is boundless. From the beach to the bay. From the heart of Texas to the Sunshine State, the pageantry is unrivaled. The nation comes alive for Bowl Week. Today, Capital One Bowl Week continues from Charlotte, North Carolina. An ACC Big East matchup. Fans have flocked to Uptown Charlotte from the Virginias. Record-setting running back Avon Coburn leads the nation's number two rushing offense against quarterback Matt Schaub, the ACC Player of the Year. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN2 with the battle of 13th-ranked West Virginia and Virginia in the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl. Kickoff coming up, but first we step away to the studio. And Chris Fowler, we can't wait to get started down here. Big crowd, a lot of enthusiasm for the Continental Tire Bowl. The Mountaineers and the Cavaliers first meeting in 17 years. Trev Alberts and Mark May alongside. Virginia, if you haven't seen them a lot this year, fun team to watch. You mentioned Matt Schaub, ACC Player of the Year, but they'll run trick plays, reverse passes, double passes, halfback passes. Al Groh will call anything. It's fun. Yes, he will, but he needs to call some better defensive plays. Well, That's I the mean, they're young. <laughs> Defensively, 102nd in the nation stopping the run. So you have to think that Avon Colburn's going to have some ability to run the football right at that defense. So offensively, I think if you're, if you're Virginia, you must get Matt Schaub going in the passing games, completing 68% of his passes. The slow, methodical passing game to Billy McMullen, and then get guys like Wally Lundy, 800 yards rushing involved. If they're going to have a chance, they're going to have to slow, methodically move down the field. Well, for West Virginia, it's all about the rushing attack in Avon Colburn, what he's been able to do and accomplish in his career, and he's the Big East all-time leading rusher, but let's not forget about Rasheed Marshall, the quarterback. He's rushed for over 600 yards, thrown for over 1,400 yards, but here's the key. He's a dual threat at the quarterback position. He scored 12 rushing touchdowns. When they get inside the five-yard line, look for Rasheed Marshall, the quarterback, to run the football. Going for a 10-win season are the Mountaineers. I say forget the slow methodical trick plays. Make it <laughs> funny. It's a bowl game. You're playing yeah, a neighbor's state. Is they... mad they're in this game. If I'm, if I'm Al Groh, I'm we'll telling see. my guys, hey. Sunny, chilly day in Charlotte. Yeah, it may be a morning kickoff, but you can bet folks are uh, they're prepared. Kickoff coming up next. Go! Founders! Go Hoos! Go Hoos! We're going to make it, baby! Go where history is made and legends live on. The tight end loses it. Scooped up. Touchdown Bulldogs. And we're all leaving the Georgia Bowl. Pete Allen will it go the distance. Unbelievable. <laughs> Don Nealon, 338th game. Touchdown Mountaineers. It is sweet music for that man. Here is Applewhite. 435 passing yards. Throws. Touchdown. His final night the first orange. And most satisfying as well. <laughs> West Virginia quarterback Rashid Marshall, the X factor for the explosive Mountaineer rushing attack. All ACC wide receiver Billy McMullen, the most frequent target in the Virginia passing game. Gorgeous day at Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today, the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl, matching the Virginia Cavaliers and the 13th-ranked West Virginia Mountaineers. Hi, everybody. Wayne Larravee along with Randy Wright. Joining us on the sidelines, Mike Gleason. Now, when you run the football, as often and as well as West Virginia does, well, it's never just one guy. And in this case, it's a trio. Well, Avon Coburn gets the lion's share of the carries and the yards. But Quincy Wilson will, spare, will spell him, get his 15 carries, and Rasheed Marshall, a much better runner than thrower. These three guys have combined for over 3,000 yards on the ground this year. Well, Randy, Al Groh has brought a pro style of offense of the Virginia Cavaliers. He's got a real versatile true freshman running back in Wally Lundy who not only leads the team in rushing but he's also the second leading receiver. Well a very balanced attack almost 50 50 run to throw 
And with this kind of balance, you force the defense to play honest. And when a defense has to play honest, play both the run and the throw, it makes it that much harder to stop either one of them. There is Al Crow in his second season as head coach at UVA, the ACC Coach of the Year. And Rich Rodriguez, a Mountaineer alumnus, second season as the head coach at West Virginia. And what a turnaround they have made. Beautiful afternoon, 43 degrees. Winds are calm with 49% humidity here. Virginia will receive to start the proceedings. They are in the white uniforms and, of course, the Cavaliers in the uh, dark blue, navy blue uniforms. Todd James has it on the tee, set to go for West Virginia. This game has been sold out for the better part of two weeks. And boy, has it been fun to hear it shouted this week. Here's the kickoff by James. Good leverage and distance. And from the one yard line, Marcus Weeks. Not much there. Gets back to the 15, a 14 yard return. Matt Schaub gets the start at quarterback. And he is the ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Set nine single season school records this year. His tight end, Heath Miller, freshman All-America, set the ACC tight end touchdown receiving record with nine this season. At the 13-yard line. Single back offense to start. Mike McGrew, the man in motion. Nice run and throw. Heath Miller, first down, and a whole lot more out near the 35-yard line on a gain of 22 yards. On the offensive line, Elton Brown, the Big E, 6'6", 324, the indispensable part of this unit. David Upchurch leads a veteran defensive line that consists of all seniors. David Upchurch, there he is. They call him the war daddy on that West Virginia front line. Lundy, nice hesitation move in the backfield. Gets out across the 35 to the 39-yard line. Angel Estrada made the stop. In the linebacking core, Grant Wiley leads the Mountaineers in tackles of the 129. Angel Estrada plays the safety position more like a linebacker and is much more involved in the running game than he is in the passing game. Here's a look at Angel Estrada playing his final game for West Virginia. Second down. Job, good protection. Looking to make a play and throws it away. Last second pressure coming from the outside linebacker James Dirty Davis. And Schaub did the wise thing. Boy, it was excellent protection by this Virginia offensive line as Schaub had all time to throw, but there was nobody open. You see the backs get involved in the pass pattern, but with good coverage behind them, Schaub sees that, wisely throws the ball out of bounds. So it's third down. Careful here is about 40% on third downs. A look at the numbers by Schaub, leading the ACC in completion percentage and touchdowns. He's got the first down here. McGrew on the reception. Wrapped up by Lance Frazier. Angel Estrada also in the neighborhood. First and ten for Virginia on the opening drive of the game. One of the reasons, Wayne, you see Matt Schaub there, why he's completing 68% of his passes. They don't throw the ball deep very often. It's a very ball control kind of passing game. A lot of quick hitters, pass rush uh, that nullifies the pass rush factor. And that the receivers run with the ball after they catch it. Lundy, straight up the middle, just one of those attitude runs. Got about a yard into the mid portion of the West Virginia defense, one of the most improved run defenses in the country this season. Wally Lundy, a big back, six foot one, 212 pounds, just a true freshman. He was all state wide receiver as a junior in high school, all state running back as a senior. So now you know why he's so involved and capable in both the running game and passing game. Second down, almost 10. The 
a quick toss to the flank. McMullen gets a nice block. Well designed play. McMullen stopped short of the 45 yard line. Well, on that offensive line, we mentioned Elton Brown and Mike Gleason. He almost didn't make it this far in his football career, did he? mentioned 6'6", 325 being indispensable. When he was a freshman in high school, he quit football one day, went home looking for some sympathy. He told his mom he quit, and she said, why did you quit? He said they were hitting too hard. She said, you turn around, get back out there, you hit them harder, or I'm going to hit you. Well, he turned around, went back to the practice field the same day he quit. He was back on the team, and now Matt Schaub can't play without him. <laughs> you know, you got to like tough love, don't you? <laughs> I believe that's Billy McMullen, who is injured. He caught the pass a moment ago, and he's the all-ACC wide receiver. And that would be a huge loss for the Cavaliers if he can't go. Al Groh concerned head coach at the moment. Opening drive, no score. Billy McBullen being assisted off the field a few moments ago. Number two all-time receiver in ACC history. Here's what happened. Well, take a look. Now, it looks like he takes the shot into the right side of the body, and then he's just being held up, and you can see the West Virginia players sitting onto him. It was the left shoulder, left arm that he was holding as he left the field. Third down, seventh play of the drive. Very close to the first down here. And we'll check it. Take a look here back to the last play where McMullen is hurt. You can see he gets piled on. He lays on the ground and immediately will grab for his left arm. And that's where the injury appears to have occurred. Lundy short of the first down. And Tom Hagan coming on in punt formation now for the Virginia Cavaliers. Wayne, back to Billy McMullen. He's their number one receiver. Jason Snelling, their fullback, was their number three receiver. He's out for the game. Shop could be without his first and third top receivers. Lance Frazier, fair catch in West Virginia's high-powered rushing attack on the field for the first time this afternoon. 27-yard punt, no return, but West Virginia will start this drive back inside their 20. Quarterback Rashid Marshall, a true threat as a runner. Eight times he's rushed for 40 or more yards in a game. His favorite receiver of late. He's been going downfield to Philip Braxton with the injury to McQuell Henderson, who has been out the last couple of games due to a high ankle sprain. They'll run out of the shotgun, no question. Wilson. Quincy Wilson to the outside. Gain of about eight yards. Willie Davis made the tackle. On the offensive line, the left tackle, Lance Nemo, first team all Big East. Brendan Schmidt leads this defensive line with 80 tackles, and he's just one of four freshmen that'll play in that line today. Pickup of nine on the previous play. They go without a huddle. Avon Coborn, first down to the 32-yard line. The linebacking core is liable to be busy for Virginia here today. Angelo Crowell, heart and soul, playing on two damaged knees. Safety Jertan Evans is a ferocious hitter and the most experienced Cavalier making his 44th career start today. First and 10 for West Virginia. Coborn picks his way. Not a whole lot there as he was met on the flat flank by Daryl Blackstock, a true freshman out of Newport News, Virginia. He's a good one. They love him. Get on the tackle, Daryl Blackstock. Yep. Early, earlier we saw Billy McMullen, the wide receiver for Virginia, go down. And uh, Mike Leeson, any word on his status? Wayne, he's left the field. He's in the locker room. It's actually his elbow. He left with his arm in a sling. Uh, the trainer couldn't say whether or not he'd be back, but right now the way he Went, left the stadium grimacing in pain. I would say right now very, very doubtful. Thank you, Mike. Second down for West Virginia. Marshall in the pass knocked down by Blackstock, the freshman. Darrell Blackstock has made a huge impact on this defense, Randy. He's a true freshman, but they have him. They're smart about it with him. They don't ask him to do too much. Go after the quarterback. Well, he really needs to be able to right here with Blackstock. He's going to come upfield. He's not going to let Marshall beat him to the outside. They're so worried about his running ability. He doesn't care about the handoff. He's staying to the outside and spying the quarterback. Third down for West Virginia. About six yards to go. 
Vince Coburn alongside the quarterback Rashid Marshall. Good protection. Threads the needle. Philip Braxton, his favorite receiver, across the 45 yard line to the 46. El Mundo Muffin Curry on the stop 10 yard gain. Nice route, nice catch, nice throw. Phil Braxton has emerged as the go-to guy for Rasheed Marshall. Here you see he only needs to get to the first down marker, gets a yard beyond that, so if he has to come back to the ball, he's got room. Perfectly thrown ball by Marshall. First and ten. Braxton in motion. They fake the reverse. Coburn slashing off right guard. Gain of almost nine yards into West into Virginia territory for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Wait, that's where I think West Virginia is going to have their most success running the ball in between the tackles. The outside linebackers for Virginia so worried about Marshall's ability, they'll play soft. The pressure is going to be on Virginia's inside linebackers to stop the run. Second and short. Coborn going wide. Got a good block on the flank from Mo Fofana and gets the first down to the 38 yard line. Angelo Crowell, whose brother is Jermaine Crowell, a record setting wide receiver of Virginia, made the stop. Wayne, look, take a look at the block right there by the fullback. He delivers that hit, and that's going to open up the alley for Colburn to see and to be able to pick up that first down. Excellent block by Fofada. Not real active with carrying the ball, only two attempts, but a great block. But in a pro style offense, fullbacks block first, catch the ball out of the backfield second, and he does the blocking part of it pretty well. First and ten. Marshall calls his number for the first time. And gets about three yards out of it. Brennan Schmidt, redshirt freshman out of Arlington, made the stop. All underclassmen, Randy, on this defensive line for West Virginia. Well, not only, Virginia. not only underclassmen, Wayne, but really freshmen. And you can see they've struggled this year trying to stop the run with those young players giving up over 200 yards a game. West Virginia on a steady drive. No score, first quarter. Marshall. Overshot, E.J. Nastasi purposely just threw it away. Rich Bettison with some uh, pass rush pressure that flushed the quarterback. You really don't have a lot of pressure initially. Marshall can move laterally without anybody in his face until the very end. Once he got close to the sideline, he had to make a decision, and that's where the pressure came. Those linebackers always give you a little love tap at the end, don't they, on something like that? Well, you guys call it a love tap. As a former <laughs> quarterback, we call it something else. Yeah. This is family TV now. This is where Marshall becomes so dangerous. Third and seven, down in positive territory with his ability to run. In a spread offense, this is a called quarterback draw. First down inside the 25 to the Virginia 22-yard line. And there you see the X factor that is Rashid Marshall. 13-yard gain. Third and seven, you're thinking pass. There's nobody here in the middle. This is a called quarterback draw. He lets the defensive line get up, and now when he breaks through that line, there's nobody there other than his blockers downfield. And, Randy, they love to do that out of a four or five receiver set spreading the field. Go for it. Inside the 20, down near the 19-yard line. Capital One Bowl Week continues tonight on ESPN 8 Eastern. Two of the top running backs of the nation lead their teams. 10th annual Alamo Bowl presented by MasterCard. Chris Brown of the 14th ranked Colorado Buffaloes meet Anthony Davis and the Wisconsin Badgers at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Top rushers in the nation. Chris Brown now healthy will compete in that ball game here tonight. He missed the last week or two of the regular season. Second down for West Virginia on the steady drive. Avon Coburn with room inside the Virginia 10-yard line. Willie Davis offends him on the play, 11 yards downfield. First and goal for West Virginia at the Virginia 9. I mean, sometimes you gain an advantage simply by your formation. What West Virginia did by formation, they outnumbered the Virginia defense to the left side, and you can see there's just no blue jerseys over by the line of scrimmage. Quincy Wilson is the uh, lone setback behind Marshall, and Wilson gets the call and slips just short of the 10-yard line. So a loss of about a yard. 
Pretty well defensed that time by Chertan Evans and Crowell and Bettison, the linebackers. You see Evans right there, fights off the block. Just no place really for Wilson to run. Very well defensed. First legitimate scoring threat of the game. West Virginia, 14th play of this drive. It began back inside the Mountaineer 20. Marshall on the run. Gets a good seal off the edge and can't win the race to the corner. Cavalier strung it out very well. It's a gain of five down to the five-yard line. Good pursuit by the Virginia defense. Bettison and Crowell really flew to the football that time. They've got excellent speed. West Virginia trying to gain numbers. They've got Fofana in front of him. You see Wilson out there to block. This is a designed quarterback sweep. It looks like West Virginia runs a one-back offense, but because of Marshall's ability to run the ball, they really have a two-back running game. Three receivers, bottom of your screen. Everybody else is tight, out of the shotgun. Marshall looking the end zone. Knocked down beautifully. Well defense. They're trying to throw the needle to Braxton. And the man who knocked it out, Jane, Jermaine Winborn. Outstanding performance by Winborn on that play. Jermaine Winborn, the only defensive back to start all 13 games this year. The most improved player on the team and the best cover guy. It is fourth down and goal to go at the five. This early in the ball game, looks like the Mountaineers are going to go for it. No, they're going to send yeah. down the field goal unit late. <laughs> Got to get points on the board, especially early. And when you look at the fact that West Virginia has struggled the last couple of plays, no reason to think they're going to get five yards on fourth down. Todd James will kick it. George Shell, the holder. It'll be a 22-yard field goal attempt. Delay a game against the Mountaineers. Late decision leading to that. Not necessarily a bad thing, though. It does improve the angle a little bit with the ball on the right hash mark, backing him up five yards. Not the worst thing. Yep, not at all. 27 yard field goal attempt for the first points of the game. And he's got it through the uprights. West Virginia scores the first points in this, the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl. Perfect snap, nice hole by Shell. James hits the driver beautifully right through the uprights. West Virginia on the lead. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Continental Tire. They're not just tires, they're Continental Tires. And by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold. Down. Easy. Better than 73,000 on hand on a sun-splashed afternoon at Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. The inaugural Continental Tire Bowl. West Virginia, 72 yards and 16 plays for the first score in the history of this game. Good leverage into this kick. Wally Lundy. When he catches a seam. Out across the 35 and dragged down across the 40-yard line. Angel Estrada. 36-yard return by Lundy. Well, the leading quarterback in the ACC, the player of the year of the ACC, steps back on the field to lead the Virginia Cavaliers who play from behind. On behalf of our 60,000 worldwide employees, our 10,000 North American employees, and our 2,000 Charlotte-based employees, Continental Tire, a world leader in tire technology, welcomes you to the Continental Tire Bowl here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are pleased and proud to bring you this game between two great institutions, the University of Virginia and West Virginia University. And boy, have they enjoyed it this week here in Charlotte. 13th ranked West Virginia playing on the lead in the early going. First and 10 from the 42 yard line for Matt Schaub and the Virginia Cavaliers. Heath Miller wide open in the heart of the defense, deep into the secondary to the 31 yard line. 
of West Virginia 26 yard pass play. Well Matt Schaub is going to have to start looking for his big tight end. He's going to be right over here and just going to release. Schaub rolls to his right. They don't even release the receiver to the right but his movement draws the defense. Heath Miller wide open. Red shirt freshman out of Swords Creek Virginia. And Matt Schaub is pumped up. He'll go to that tight end early and often. On first down, Lundy and an escort, but it's well defensed by West Virginia. The man who popped through initially on the play was Brian King to blow that up. We are at Erickson Stadium at Charlotte, North Carolina. Number 13, West Virginia against Virginia, along with Mike Leeson and Randy Wright. This is Wayne Larravee. Wonderful to have you with us. The Bowl Challenge Cup. Big East off to a very good start. Obviously, the Big 12 as well. And the Big 10 gets into action tonight with the Wisconsin Badgers down to the Alamo Zone. We promoted that game a little earlier. Boy, what two physical teams you'll see tonight with Wisconsin and Colorado. Second down. Shaw wants Lundy. Lundy was late in turning. And as he makes the catch, Angel Estrada makes the tackle to the 25 yard line, gain of about four. Nice job by Matt Schaub to drift to his left. All the pressure was coming from his right from the West Virginia defense. He knew where his receivers were, especially his outlet in Lundy. Schaub bought a little extra time by moving to his left. Wayne, it's so important that whenever Virginia gets down close to the goal line, they get points. West Virginia looks to be able to hold the ball with their running offense. Virginia won't get that many opportunities, so they need to capitalize. Shaw without his second, first, and third leading receivers on an option. A late pitch. Here comes Ronnie Lundy. Got the first down. Down to the 15-yard line. Good execution on the option there. 10-yard gain. Lance Frazier in from the secondary to make the stop on the true freshman, Wally Lundy. This is one of the plays you put in when you've got a long time here they're going to run the option this way and the back's going to come to the outside Schaub does a nice job of holding on to the ball and making the defensive backs commit and there's so much room Lundy's got the speed to beat to the outside when you've got five weeks to prepare it you add some new wrinkles out of the shotgun on first down Quick toss into the flat, and that's an incomplete pass. Michael Johnson, another true freshman in the offensive backfield, a speedster, couldn't quite rein it in. Now, Michael Johnson is one of the guys that can change the game because of his speed. He's got real breakaway speed, a little smaller than Lunday, only 5'10", but Al Groats just creates ways to get the backs involved in the passing game. He really does, and that's, of course, the signature of a pro-style offense. Your fullback's going to catch 30-some passes. Your tailback's going to catch at least that many, maybe more. And your quarterback has to know that those guys have got to be involved for the passing game to be effective. Marcus Hagens, number 18, the backup quarterback in motion. They go that way to Hagens. He steps back, throws it to the other side. Lundy for the touchdown. They lateral to the backup quarterback. Marcus Hagens, Wally Lundy slipped out of the backfield undetected into the right corner of the end zone. Well, one of the things that Todd Graham, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, told us yesterday, my guys have got to be aware of the trick plays. Virginia creates these things. They pick the times to run them, and they execute them very well. And his team must have forgotten that point because that was a very well-executed play. Connor Hughes for the point after. And the kick is good. Earlier this season, Virginia worked to play similar to this that had the quarterback. That's Schaub on the other end of it. Schaub with the lateral. Higgins steps back and steps up to the end zone. Wally Lundy and Virginia into the lead. Virginia breaks on top of the little razzle-dazzle, Randy. Take a look at Wally Lundy here. He's going to come up fake like he blocks and then releases, and that's what fools the defense. He actually goes down to his knees right there, attempting to throw a bad block, and that's why he's wide open. Hagens comes across in motion, and as you said, the backup quarterback, he's used to being able to throw that. Excellent decoy by Lundy. Indeed. Kurt Smith kicking off. Twin safeties back deep for West Virginia. Good leverage once again, and it's Lance Frazier. 
Frazier catches a seam as a penalty marker flies. The first penalty of the ball game coming up. And some extracurriculars. Another flag flies very late. Penalty marker on the field. Frazier out across the 30 yard line pending the outcome of the flag. It's a hold against West Virginia. West Virginia tries to play the game of field position. It's more important. Holding for the receiving team. 10 yards to the spot of the foul. First down. I mean, it's more important in the West Virginia offense to have good field position because they don't have the ability to make the big plays as quickly as the Virginia does. These kinds of penalties on special teams really hurt this team. Rich Rodriguez pacing the sidelines for West Virginia. 20 yards on the kickoff return. The nation's 13th ranked team, number two rushing team in college football. The West Virginia Mountaineers trailing in the early going. Rashid Marshall on first down to Avon Coborn. Coborn trying to follow Lance Nemo, but the fired up Cavaliers stack it up. Angelo Crowell led the way along with Waku Robinson. Monday, Capital Bowl, Capital One Bowl week continues with two games on ESPN. The day begins with College Game Day Bowl Special presented by Outback at 1.30. Then 2 Eastern, the SEC West champion Arkansas Razorbacks. Led by quarterback Matt Jones meets Assad Abdul Kalik and the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. At a 5.30, Calvin Pace, Wake Forest team and Deacons defense look to stop Ontario Smith in the tough Oregon offense in the second annual Seattle Bowl. Quick toss to the flank here. A.J. Nastasi, who missed some time this season, about seven games with a high ankle sprain, makes the reception. Jertan Evans on the stop. Well, it's good to see Nastasi back into this offense. You mentioned he missed a lot of games this year. He's only had three receptions all year. He was their leader last year with 42, so you could see how much they've missed him. Third down. Going deep, Braxton's out there, has to come back for it, makes the catch as a penalty marker flies. Inside the 35, near the 30-yard line of Virginia, Willie Davis, I believe, will get called for pass interference, 43-yard pass play. It was a good attempt by Davis to try and tackle Braxton and keep him from catching the ball, but a nice job of concentrating by Braxton. Pass interference on the defense. The penalty is refused. We'll take the result of the play. First down. Rasheed Marshall had put, could have put just a little bit more on this ball. This would have been a clear touchdown. Not a lot of pressure initially, and Marshall holds the ball until Braxton gets way behind the coverage, and you can see Braxton had to come back and almost feel that like a punt. And Randy, is this a product of blown coverage? Was the cornerback expecting safety help over the top and didn't get it? The defensive backs are so worried about Rasheed Marshall running the ball that they're letting these receivers run by them. Substitution infraction on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. So they've had a delay a game and a substitution infraction on West Virginia. It'll be first and 15. And you take a look right there coming on. And once you pass the numbers you right there, you've got to stay, stay in, in the field to play. Yep. Well, everybody's a little excited for the bowl game, you know. West, West Virginia's not used to getting that kind of yardage in the passing yeah, game. Exactly. They were kind of shook. <laughs> More so than Virginia, maybe. Cobalt. Had to cut it back inside. Tough sledding. Got about three yards down to the 32-yard line. When I think what West Virginia has done is they focused on running in between their tackles. As this first quarter is winding down, Virginia is starting to be aware of that a little bit more. They're starting to bring those defensive ends and outside linebackers down a little bit. And now is where I think you'll start to see Marshall try to get to the outside. Marshall calling the play at the line. They have three styles of offense, or three speeds, I should say, of offense. This is more of a regular offensive speed for West Virginia. On the reverse, Philip Braxton. Well-designed play inside the 25-yard line of Virginia. Angelo Crowell 
And Armando Curry respond, gain of nine, leaving a third and makeable about three yards to go. Lance Nemo, the left tackle, acts as though he's coming down to block, and then he pulls to the outside. Marshall, after the handout, comes out and blocks, and really what you got is a two-man sweep. And he kind of slowed up Daryl Blackstock to the quarterback and didn't get himself hurt in the process, which is good. When you're a quarterback, first thing is don't get hurt. Yeah. Second thing is just getting away. Yeah, exactly. That's what he did. Third down, about three. Marshall perhaps changing the play at the line. The fake to Coburn. Marshall just inside the 20 for the first down. Shedard Nubi and Merrill Robertson on the stop. First and ten. Now there's the young man, uh, Darrell Blackstock, the true freshman. Mike Gleason, what do you have on him? This kid came, uh, has come a long way personally to make it to this football field today. That's right, Wayne. He had 50 sacks in two years in high school, but he called himself a thug. Now his coaches say that might be a stretch, but he got into shouting matches. He skipped classes. So he went to Fork Union Military Academy. And we'll finish the story right after the play, Wayne. Quincy Wilson forced out of bounds inside the 15. Mike? He got all A's and B's at Fork Union. He went from private to lieutenant, and he had uh, 22 sacks. His coach, John Schumann, said that he and Dexter Coakley were two of the best players to ever play there. Well, he wore number 11, Al Groh, who coached Lawrence Taylor at North Carolina, and with the Giants, convinced him to try number 56. He said linebackers don't wear number 11. Now, he's not saying he's an ex-Lawrence Taylor, but 56 is a pretty good number for a linebacker to try to live up to, Wayne. Now you take a look at the Hampton, Virginia Beach area and the names who have come out of there in sports. Blackstock had an interesting point. He said, I went to school in high school. I was a luncher. I went to eat lunch, and that was about all I did there. Fulborn trying to cut it back. Boy, they had a nice hole initially, Randy. They do get the first down, but it looked like for a moment they'd get a touchdown. Newby and Robertson close the gap, and it's going to be first and goal just outside the five for West Virginia. Coburn accelerates so well. Here it looks like he's going to the outside, but then he cuts it back because that's where the hole is. Excellent vision, excellent acceleration to pick up that many yards this close to the goal line. They mark it at the six, first and goal. Coburn picking his way to the outside. Tackle missed by Jertan Evans. Avon Coburn into the end zone. Six-yard touchdown run, and West Virginia back on top. A vintage Avon Colburn run, this time designed to go inside, nothing there, uses that quickness to get to the outside. Sometimes your line gets you the goal line, sometimes you got to do it on your own. Colburn did it on his own there. Todd James for the point after touchdown. And he's got it through the uprights. This is that when blocking and running come together, watch the tight end Johnson on the flank of the play. Coburn dips inside, bounces to the outside, tackle missed on the flank, end zone payoff for Avon Coburn and the West Virginia Mountaineers. They're back in front now, leading by the score, 10 to 7. Sixteen touchdown runs this season for the all-time leading rusher in Big East history. Boy, he is, and we talked earlier, 310 carries coming into today's game. That's an, a tremendous pounding he's taken. 43 career starts coming in, his 44th career start, a senior that is really going to be missed, but just a great team player. Doesn't care about winning, or only cares about winning. Doesn't care about the personal satisfaction, the personal awards that come, and he's been a great leader and has really helped Rich Rodriguez in, in the system that Rodriguez has wanted to convey to the team, he's really bought into that been a great team leader. Well, they, they say of Avon Coburn, not a day go by, goes by that he doesn't try to do something to make himself better. Well, I would say he's had a lot of success with that because he's pretty good. Todd James with a kickoff. Marcus Weeks. Out across the 25, brought down just short. Of the 30-yard line. Well, last night in Uptown Charlotte, many of the fans of the two schools came out for a pep rally. That's Matt Shaw, leading the Cavalier fans, the ACC Player of the Year, and West Virginia Mountaineers, represented by a linebacker, James Davis. 
Oh, they had a lot of fun downtown last night. They closed off several of the streets of the inner city and just a great time. Well, the pep rally was supposed to start at 5 o'clock, and there were so many people down there early and pushing forward. They had to start early, and the city's just been crazy with excitement. First and 10 of the 30-yard line. They reverse it. Johnson, Michael Johnson with good speed and staying home on the flank of that play and making the tackle, Lance Frazier, he prevented a huge gain as it is a pickup of seven. Well, with this West Virginia defense, they run three linemen, three linebackers, five defensive backs. Not real big, but a lot of speed. Frazier did a nice job of staying home and making the tackle. First quarter comes to a close. Couple of touchdowns. Al Grove signals touchdown for his Virginia Cavaliers. A little bit of a trick play there, but the Mountaineers marched in with Avon Coborn to recapture the lead. Continental Tire Bowl in beautiful downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. We're at Erickson Stadium, West Virginia, leading Virginia 10 to 7. Along with Randy Wright and Mike Leeson, this is Wayne Larrabee, and it's second down and three here for UVA. Wally Lundy trying to get to the edge. No, pass back. Lee Flicker, Shaw going deep down the middle, and it's well covered. Did not fool the secondary of West Virginia. Shaw trying to get it to his roommate, Ryan Sawyer. Jermaine Adai and Brian King had the coverage. Yeah, you're exactly right, Wayne. West Virginia was not fooled at all. Sawyer came straight across on a deep post route, but good coverage. Algro told us yesterday that he wants his team to have a high run and completion total. Numbers of runs and numbers of completion. If that equals 60, he thinks his team will win. First quarter, they had six rushes and only six completions. Third down. Job releases Lundy first down. Well done. Good execution. Pickup of about five yards across the 40 yard line. And again, we should tell you that the leading receiver, Billy McMullen, the all ACC receiver, went out of this ball game early after the first completion on the first drive of the game, suffered an elbow injury, not known if he'll be back. So, with the injury prior to this game of Jason Snelling, the fullback, who is the third leading receiver, coupled with McMillan, the leading receiver, Matt Schaub is operating today without two of his top three receivers. He's going to have to go more to Lundy, who's caught 53 balls coming into today, and his tight end, Heath Miller. On first down. To the outside, Brandon Isaiah, fullback, to the studio in Chris Fowler. Away in the best game of bowl week so far last night. Kansas State has to rally from behind against pesky Arizona State late in the fourth quarter. L. Roberson on the slant to Derek Evans. They had dodged the huge upset. We have full highlights at halftime. I'll tell you something. Dirk Cutter had Arizona State ready, didn't he? Oh, he had him ready. And they played an outstanding game. Some people might look at that and say Kansas State didn't play very well. I think it was Arizona State playing very well. Played lights out. Schaub got nine on the previous play, second and short. There's the long throw to the sideline, and Ryan Sawyer, who has replaced Billy McMullen, makes the reception. Lance Frazier, the coverage on the far side, and it's a first down to the 42-yard line of West Virginia. Nice job by Schaub recognizing the soft coverage. If you have to look way over to the right where everybody is packed into the middle here, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Soft cushion well to the right, and Soria could make that catch easily in front of Frazier. Virginia now trailing by three on a steady drive into West Virginia territory. Two tight ends on the line, the offset eye in the backfield. Familiar pro look. McGrew in motion. They fake the reverse. It is Lundy. Inside the 40 and out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Gain of seven yards on the play. Well, a lot of misdirection, both of these teams here today. Well, the, both de these teams have excellent defensive speed, mostly with West Virginia because they have smaller players on the field, and the smaller players you would think would be quicker. They also have them, as there you see McMullen with his arm in the sling. You mentioned earlier, Wayne, he would got hurt. It does not look like he has a chance of coming back in. West Virginia is thinking trick plays. Virginia now has tried to run three of them. Second down. Miller, the tight end in motion. Here's Shaw. Being flushed by David Upchurch. 
Schaub on the run, lets it go and throws it away. So Matt Schaub, a veteran quarterback that he is, junior out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, did the right thing there. Came in completing 68.7% of his passes. My goodness, third nationally in completion percentage. When you combine that with the fact he's had 27 touchdown passes and only seven interceptions, what an outstanding year. Well, those are Randy Wright kind of numbers, I would say. Yeah, if Randy Wright had those kind of numbers, I wouldn't be here today. I'd be playing tomorrow. <laughs> well, we're glad you didn't have those kind of numbers. 7 of 11, 79 yards for Shaw. They empty the backfield on third down. And Shaw calls his own number. Nice call here. Inside the 25, down near the 20-yard line. You do not expect Virginia necessarily to make that call, but Schaub is no slouch with his feet. Well, when we asked him yesterday to rate what he thought his best skills were, he put his intelligence first, accuracy, arm strength, and then foot speed was almost an afterthought. <laughs> but it shows you when you catch a defense by surprise that even somebody without great speed can have success. Can get 14 yards. My goodness. Third down, both teams very good today. Ottawa Anderson, the wide receiver in motion. Wally Lundy going to the boundary side. Made like he was going to throw the football. Then a decisive cut to the sidelines. And Lundy down near the 15-yard line. Wayne, I do think he wanted to throw the ball. Heath Miller, his tight end, had come down to block and then had come back up into the pass routes, and there was good coverage. Lundy looking to throw. It's not there right away. They tell you if it's not open immediately, it's not going to be open at all. Then tuck the ball and run. Watch some of the hitting here as he makes his turn. Ooh, that was a good, good pop. Ben Lynch, Adam Lenort in the vicinity. Second down. Second down at about six. Again, Shaw calls his number. Well, you put in a new wrinkle for a bowl game. You said maybe this is one of those wrinkles Al Groh put in. He and Bill Musgrave, the offensive coordinator. Brian King makes the stop. Well, when you run a play that works, especially at the college level, you're going to be able to run it more than just once a game because colleges don't adjust as quickly as pros do. They run that play now twice on the same drive. That defense hasn't had a chance to go over to the sideline and get their adjustment. On a Sunday, you can run that play once and then maybe not ever again, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Time out take it on the field. Little over 12 minutes to go, and it has been an entertaining first half. 13th ranked West Virginia leading Virginia by three. Third down coming up for UVA, trailing by three. Third down at the 11 yard line of West Virginia. Cavaliers have been successful four out of five times in third downs. Matt Schaub with split backs gets motion from a wide receiver. Wally Lundy gets the first down. Almost got a touchdown out of that. Lance Frazier wrapped him up. Well, it has been an entertaining first half so far. We're early into the second quarter. And, and Randy, anything you see here that has surprised you? Uh, the number of trick plays Virginia has <laughs> tried to run, the one worked very well. They've tried a couple others. So this early to run that many, that's been a little surprise. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, that's something that, again, Rich Rodriguez has told his squad to be aware of. First and goal. Lundy again bouncing to the outside. Good play made on the flank of the defense by the spur safety Jermaine Thaxton. Frazier supporting as well from the secondary. Continental Tire Bowl first annual Erickson Stadium Charlotte North Carolina number 13 West Virginia against Virginia. Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason, a packed house, better than 73,000 on hand in this stadium. And they have really enjoyed the week. And what weather we have here today. Crisp and cool, about 43, 45 degrees, supposed to get up to 51 degrees. Second and goal for Virginia, beating to take the lead. Schaub, who's run twice on this drive, gets down to the one-yard line. Grant Wiley, the linebacker, made the stop. I don't think this play here was a designed quarterback keeper. Both backs went to the same side like an ISO block, ISO run. 
Chubb then looks upfield quickly. His receiver's not open right away. You follow your backs into the hole. They're your lead blockers. Nice job by Chubb knowing that and picking, the, picking up all the way down to the one-yard line. Third and goal at the one. Lundy, the tail of the tandem. It goes to Lundy, and the freshman picks his way, fighting for the goal line, and he is denied. The Mountaineers turn him back. Ernest Hunter and Grant Wiley. Hunter, a redshirt freshman whom they call a special athlete. Suffered a broken leg, missed seven games earlier this season, but he's back for this ball game. It's fourth down and Al Crow going for it. We talked earlier about the importance of getting points for Virginia when they're inside the 20-yard line, choosing to go for seven when you've only got half a yard instead of the three. Let's see if Schaub takes it on a keeper. Nope. The fake to Lundy. Schaub looking to throw under pressure. Schaub takes it himself. Touchdown. It's not what I had in mind, but the quarterback did score on it. Well, it was a designed pass play. Virginia, Virginia, West Virginia, excuse me, was not full. And Schaub, again, with just enough quickness and presence of mind to pick the opening and get that ball into the end zone. Not the way Al Grove threw that one up. No, I don't think so. But it did cap a 70 yard 15 play march. Connor Hughes for the point after. Right down the boulevard. When it is fourth down and one, everyone in the house is thinking quarterback sneak perhaps. Little play action. Manchop says, okay, you want the quarterback to score? Here it is. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Continental Tire. They're not just tires, they're Continental Tires. And by new Campbell's Chunky Roasted Favorites. Hearty soups that fill you up right. Wayne Larvey, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason, welcome back to beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, the band's all set to go. Virginia leading 14 to 10. 70 yards, 15 plays. Matt Schaub, a major factor on that drive on the ground. His ability through the passing game, though, quarterback draws so the passing game set up his success on the ground. Kirk Smith gets his leg into this one. It will not be returnable. Philip Braxton lets it go through. And on the uh, ESPN game track, let's take a look at what happened. Most of this action in the first quarter. Little trick play. Razzle dazzle the backup quarterback Higgins to Wally Lundy for a 7 3 Virginia lead from 14 yards away. Then Marshall, Rashid Marshall, the X factor on the ground for West Virginia. 15 yard run there, helping to set up Avon Coburn for a six yard touchdown ramble. And that put West Virginia on top 10 7. And then Virginia recaptures the lead right here. Matt Shaw play action looking to pass takes it himself a one yard touchdown run. Now Wayne both teams doing pretty much what we thought they would do with success. Virginia the trick plays the passing game and West Virginia success on the ground. So it's been a seesaw fair in this first half. West Virginia 102 yards rushing already in the ball game and we expected that. Not a whole lot there as they've been running hard with Avon Coborn out of the backfield. Make that Quincy Wilson on the carry. Got a couple of yards. Andrew Hoffman on the stop for Virginia. As we mentioned, a young, all underclassman defensive line. And today, you're talking about two freshmen, a true freshman, a redshirt freshman, and a sophomore on that defensive line to start. Second down. Wilson trying to cut it back this time not on the flank and driven down good coverage and penetration that time Angelo Crowell made the stop Capital One Bowl week continues tonight on ESPN at 8 Eastern two of the top running backs of the nation lead their teams in the 10th annual Alamo Bowl presented by MasterCard that's Chris Brown and Anthony Davis of Wisconsin Brown of the Buffaloes Davis of the Badgers at the Alamo Dome San Antonio Texas couple of great backs. Boy, they are. They've both been banged up a little bit this year and missed some time, but are both healthy now, and they'll be toting that ball tonight down to San Antonio. Third down at about seven. West Virginia, four of five on third down conversions. 
Little screen pass. Wilson. Didn't have anywhere to go. Amundo Curry and then Daryl Blackstock. On the flank of the defense, got the job done. He lost a yard. Virginia is running a two deep. These guys are going to go bad, and that leaves these guys to come up and stop the shorter passing game. And when you run a screen, you're throwing this right into the teeth of where all those blue jerseys are. And really, there's no place for Wilson to be able to run. Virginia just had a good defense call. Mark Fazilari in punt formation gets a low snap. Just did get that kick away. Good looking kick. Higgins, the backup quarterback, from the 30. His own man tripped him up. Gets by a defender. Now hits the seam hard. It's off to the races. Marcus Higgins, secretary at the Belmont. No one will catch him. Touchdown. 70 yards. as a backup quarterback in a quarter and a half has had a major impact on this game already. Wonderful return. He threw his first touchdown pass of his career in the first quarter. He runs one back in the second quarter. They mark it officially at 69 yards, and Connor Hughes puts the finishing touch on that score for Virginia. Marcus Higgins. Takes it all the it's way. Back starts from the three. His first punt return touchdown of his career. 69 yards in Virginia to a big lead. Unranked Virginia has 13th ranked West Virginia in a hole here in the second quarter. There's nothing like the excitement of the home team call. In this case, the Virginia radio call from Matt McDonald a few moments ago. And we'll hear it coming up following the kickoff. Kurt Smith will boot it away. Wayne Al Gro told us yesterday that West Virginia has more developed talent than Virginia. And if both teams play their best game, West Virginia over the long haul is going to win more. So they need to help us. We need to get a break. We need something good to help us to balance that out. And they just got it on that special team. They just teams got play. something very good on that special teams play. Kurt Smith has it on the tee. Well, this is, again, West Virginia, the number two rushing team in the nation, but running teams have a harder time coming back in a football game like this, but there's plenty of time. Plenty of time in this first half. Good high kick once again. Philip Braxton, good speed, trying to get to the outside and makes the turn. Rook down just short of the 30-yard line, Mark Biddle. How about that hometown radio call, the Virginia Radio Network? Kicks a beauty, and it'll take Higgins back to the 31-yard line. Looks for a block. He slips a little bit, dodges a man at the 35, 40, 45, 50, midfield, 40. He's going to score. 25, 20, 10, 5. Give it to him. Matt McDonald on the call, the Virginia Radio Network. Just under eight minutes to go. 69 yard punt return that's 42 yards longer than his previous best first down West Virginia the 13th ranked Mountaineers Marshall comes up throwing pretty well designed play at Torrey Johnson wide open off his hands incomplete oh it was a well designed play and West Virginia had the Cavaliers in the coverage they wanted a two deep you bring your tight end right behind the, the linebacker, and Torrey Johnson had loads of room to run had he been able to hang on to that ball. I mentioned three different speeds of this uh, no huddle offense for West Virginia. They're in the regular speed right now. They'll take the play clock down to five or six seconds here. They have two other gears. Marshall straight ahead. Not much there as he went right into the teeth of the Virginia defense. Mike Leeson, Jatan Evans, talk a little bit about him. How do you get that to a unique name? Well, I'll tell you what, Wayne, uh, that's an interesting story. I'll send it back up in the booth in a second, but uh, he really likes to stay active. 
in the classroom as well as the field. He had 108 tackles this year, but he took 18 credit hours this fall, 17th century poetry, an English lit class, two German literature translation classes, Spanish in history of women. He majors in English, and he's constantly changing or correcting his teammates' grammar. He has 285 <laughs> tackles in his career. That's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, and he's correcting your grammar at the same time. Trying to hit the scene. Braxton on a diving grab. And a penalty marker down. They're going to score to completion inside the 45 of Virginia. Penalty markers down. Angelo Crowell had coverage and he had the tackle. And what are they ruling? One official out overruled the other. Are they saying incomplete? There I think they're, dis flag down. they're discussing now. It would have been a heck of a catch by Braxton as he went down to try and haul that ball in. The flag went down, though, if it is interference against Virginia. Remember, it's only a 15-yard penalty, so West Virginia certainly would rather have it be ruled a catch. Holding. Kind of defense. Penalty is refused. Taking his open play. Put down. They scored it a completion. All right, now, Mike, we were talking about Jertan Evans. Take a look here at what Rasheed Marshall sees. He's got three receivers going down the field. It opens up. He throws the ball. What a beautiful catch oh. by Braxton. One hand with his left arm reaching back as he's sliding away. Take a look at this. Just a great catch there by Braxton. West Virginia right back at it. Penalty markers down here. Premature movement on the offensive line. And Mike Leeson, we meant to wrap up the story on Jertan Evans. That's a unique name. How did he get it? Well, his mother said uh, at a young age, dare to be different, and she certainly was. Uh, her, his father's name was Jermaine, so you take the first three letters, J-E-R. Her name was Tanya. First three letters, T-O-N, so it's Jertan, and Jertan said, you know, never, never in his life has he run into another Jertan. <laughs> <laughs> that's a unique name. You're right. And, you know, I, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing no. either. No, absolutely. Well, he's had a heck of a year. He's third on this team with tackles, 108. First and 15. Marshall may be changing the play. Three wide receivers set. Coburn. Hit initially by Angelo Crowell. That slowed him up a gain of two down to the 45 yard line where Crowell's teammates came in. Wednesday, join Brad Dessler, Bob Greasy, a battle of the Bayou. SEC champs, fourth ranked Georgia. They got the AC champ ACC champion, Florida State Seminoles, in the Nokia Sugar Bowl, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, ABC Sports Championship Television. Georgia coming off their first SEC title since 1982. Second down, about 13 yards to go. So far, Virginia doing a nice job of keeping Rasheed Marshall contained. Marshall on the option. Nothing there on the flank. Boy, Virginia well prepared for everything they're seeing. Coburn had nowhere to go. Jermaine Hardy, the cornerback, came up, and I'm very impressed, Randy, with the perimeter defense we're seeing today from Virginia. They're playing a lot of this too deep, which means your cornerbacks are up by the line of scrimmage, and they're funneling everything into the middle to those inside linebackers, and Crowell especially is having a heck of a day. Third down and long. Third and about 15. Not the position you want to be in for a team that doesn't throw the ball very well. And they reverse it. Braxton looking to throw, hit as he throws, and it's intercepted. Blackstock makes the interception. The freshman out to the 50. In the West Virginia territory to the 49-yard line. Darrell Blackstock, his first career interception. Penetration into the offensive backfield will disrupt most any play. Braxton not familiar with throwing the ball very often. If a trick play doesn't work, you got to have the discipline to tuck the ball, take the loss, and punt the ball away. He tries to force something and has created a huge play for the Cavaliers. And watch Muffin Curry on the pass here by Braxton Curry all over him. That's the 5'8 cornerback who has three sacks this season. First down for Virginia. Already leading 21 to 10. And it's juggled and dropped incomplete. 
The tight end, Heath Miller, had it in the seam between defenders but could not hang on near the 40-yard line. Wayne, with Virginia playing without their top receiver and Billy McMullen, that's almost nullified by the opportunities West Virginia is given this Virginia offense. With the turnover right there, the field is much shorter for them. Coming up on four and a half minutes to go. First half. On second and ten, McGrew in motion. Fake the reverse. Lundy barreling up the middle. Inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Looked to be a gain of about five yards, leaving a third down for Matt Schaub and the Virginia Cavaliers. We talked earlier, Wayne, about the balance that Virginia has in their offense. They've thrown the ball well, and you can see when they decide to run the ball, those linemen come off that line of scrimmage. They're getting right into the faces of that defensive line, and they're starting to create some holes. Big play for both sides, especially the defense here. Motion from the fullback, Isaiah. Lundy. Very close to the first down inside the 40-yard line. Near the 38, Adam Lenore, the linebacker, made the stop. West Virginia with eight men up by the line of scrimmage. Nice job by this Virginia offensive line creating the hole they did for Lundy to even pick up what he got. Officials have called for the change. They're that close. Rich Rodriguez, he and his team have their work cut out for them, trailing by 11. He told us that he felt his defensive line had to do a lot of shifting, a lot of moving, a lot of scheming because the Virginia offense will control the line of scrimmage if his defensive front just sits there. You're less than a yard away from a first down. If you're Virginia with the momentum of the ball game as it is now, do you go for it? With the success that they've had running inside today, I would. Bring up four good inches. Fourth and inches for Al Crow and company. I also would go for it with the way your defense has been able to contain Rasheed Marshall. Right now, the Virginia defense playing very well. Not to mention the offense, which has put a touchdown on the board, and special teams, which has put a punt return touchdown on the board. If West Virginia gets back into this game offensively, they're going to have to earn what they get. Neither team turns the ball over very much. Here it is, fourth down. Fourth and inches. Lundy following his blocking first down and a whole lot more. Boy, he just took Elton Brown and shoved him ahead of him. And he cleared the way to a first down. Lance Frazier made the tackle. Nice job coming off the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. And as we said, you've got West Virginia kind of guessing. Is it run? Is it pass? What are we going to do? Take a look, though, at the linemen just come off the ball. The backs come up there. They pull the guard around. Elton Brown, huge hole. Or when you can give your back the time to get his momentum and running downhill, he's awfully hard to stop. They pitch on the reverse. Michael Johnson with a blocker in front. Gets the corner to the 15 and is out of bounds. King forced him out. 16-yard gain, and it was Heath Miller on the flank of the play who made the block that sprung it loose. Wayne, I don't know if anybody runs trick plays as well as Virginia. They don't get real anxious because of it, because it's normally what they do. To Brickishaw Ferguson, what a great block. Not only getting in front of your man, but sustaining it. And watch take, this. Take a look. You got two guys downfield blocking, and there was only one white jersey for a long time. Those are pretty good odds. Well, Heath Miller made a nice block. Allowing his running back to get around the end. Michael Johnson, a true freshman. First down. Virginia threatening again, already leading by 11. Weeks hit in the backfield, and this time going nowhere. Snuffed out beautifully by Ben Collins, the veteran linebacker. Well, we were talking about Debrickishaw Ferguson. Glee, what do you have on him? Well, Wayne, he's the first true freshman ever to start the season opener at Virginia. He's listed at 6'5", 265. Coaches say that's a little bit light, but if there's one guy who can handle the assignment, it's Ferguson. You see, he was an honor roll student in high school, an accomplished saxophone player, plus he earned his black belt in karate when he was 15. He's quick, he's smart, the coaches say he's confident, and also he has an 87-inch wingspan. You know, Mike, that's my question. An 87-inch wingspan, what does he need the black belt for? <laughs> <laughs> he could be a 747. Job on the rollout, well-designed play. 
Brandon Isaiah, who has replaced the injured Jason Snelling as the backup fullback, made the catch. And they're about three yards short of the first down. Coming up at halftime, here's what Chris Fowler has for us. When we got highlights of that thrilling Holiday Bowl last night, K-State's come from behind victory. We'll check the standings in the Bowl Challenge Cup. Tonight, the first Big Ten Bowl team involved. And there's a big name out there talking to Kentucky about that vacant head coaching job. Trevor and Mark will join me coming up at halftime. All right, Chris, you've got probably at the edge of my seat on that one. Let's see who that big name is. Third down, about three yards to go. McGrew in motion. Weeks hit in the point of attack. Well, I tell you what, good penetration that time, good movement up front. David Upchurch, the war daddy, made a big tackle right there, denying Virginia a first down. Fourth down coming up for the Cavaliers, the field goal unit coming on now. Good call to go for the field goal right here. This is the area where Virginia likes to get their tight end involved, choosing this pastime, though, to stay on the ground. Nice stand by this West Virginia defense to hold them short of that first down, and Al Grove choosing to get more points on the board. Quarterback Matt Schaub will hold for Connor Hughes, the true freshman, 27-yard field goal attempt to extend the lead for UVA. He's got it on his way, and it is no good. I believe we're going to have West Virginia jumped off sides, though, and I think Virginia now, with that penalty, should give them a first down. It'll be, You're right. It'll be half the distance to the goal from the nine-yard line, though, but that'll push you past the seven, so they're going to get a new set of downs here with 24 seconds to go. Connor Hughes missed it to the right, but take a look Watch right here. here. These guys come over the ball early, and when one jumps, the other one jumps yep. clearly off sides. What a brick break for Virginia. A mental mistake that you don't see West Virginia make very often. And Connor Hughes hit the right upright. But the penalty gives Virginia a reprieve here. Boy, Rich Rodriguez, one of those, if it can go wrong, it has gone wrong, especially here in the second half, second quarter. This is where Virginia likes to get their tight end. Heath Miller involved. Nine touchdown catches as a redshirt freshman. Double tight ends on the line now. He's lined up right over there. That's Marcus Weeks in motion. Lundy trying to cut it back. Driving for the goal line. Touchdown! Virginia Cavaliers! They don't throw it to Miller, but they run right on top of him, and he has really improved as a blocker. West Virginia just had the mental letdown after that stand and the missed field goal. They weren't ready to take that field again as a defensive unit, and that was an easy touchdown run for Virginia. Jason Davis, senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Shake it up on that play for West Virginia. Four-yard touchdown run by Wally Lundy, his second touchdown of the day. It's Jason Davis, numbers on him. And uh, they continue to uh, work on him. We'll have a status report when we come back. Final 30 seconds, first half in Charlotte. Celebration time for Virginia at the moment. Al Crow's team playing on a surprising 18-point lead. Final 19 seconds, first half. Well, the Mountaineer fans up against it here. Kirk Smith on the kickoff. Not going to allow much of a return, kind of a split kick. Bill Braxton trying to make something out of it. Across the 30. Braxton gets close to the 40 and in fact across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Nine seconds remaining. Art Thomas made the stop. 29 yard return. Coming up at the half, Chris Fowler and company. K State survives last night. The Bowl Challenge Cup standings and the Big Ten, of course, takes the field tonight. And the coaching carousel, a big name talking to Kentucky, did Chris say? Boy, there have been some major debacles with some of the coaching changes. And, and, you know, the John L. Smith one going to yeah. Michigan State is the most recent. John L. Smith and, of course, the uh, athletic director at uh, Louisville at halftime of that bowl game mentioned that he had given permission to Michigan State to talk to John L. Smith. It was a foregone conclusion from there. He already hired him. Yeah. Perhaps one final shot at it. 
Marshall looking to make something happen. Rainbowing. Braxton, the antenna receiver, and it's caught by Ottawa. Caught out of bounds on the near sidelines. Marshall completes the pass play. Miquel Henderson, the injured wide receiver, who's healthy for this game, steps out of bounds, but I believe time had expired. And West Virginia comes up four yards short. Much to the protestation of the quarterback, Rasheed Marshall. West Virginia pass complete to number 83, Miquel Henderson. Miquel Henderson called it in. The pass appeared to be intended for Philip Braxton. The half came to a close. I believe he got tipped by Braxton into Henderson's hands. I think he was in bounds, but then clearly went out of bounds. And you're right, there had been no time left on the clock. Take a look again. Marshall does a good job of throwing the ball deep. Pretty poor coverage with only one blue jersey deep. There's the tip. Uh, Henderson, well, I don't know if he was in bounds there or not. I don't know if that would have been ruled a completion or not. That right foot looked like it came down on the line. It's a moot point, though. But one second was left on the clock and the official ruling right there that it was good at the four yard line of course our clock again the officials on the field keep the official time but it looked like they had a second left however for rich rodriguez and company it has been a nightmarish first half especially the second quarter as they head off at halftime trailing virginia 28 to 10 here at the Continental Tire Bowl. Well, you commented about all the breaks going Virginia's way. Some they created on their own. That was a bad break for West Virginia right there. 55 yard pass play that would have been ruled a completion, what we understand. And again, take a look at the catch. Let's see if we can uh, pick it up right here. Braxton on the tip to Henderson. And hard to tell if he was on the line or not. Let's go to Chris Fowler. It was hard to tell from here as well, Wayne, but our producer reminding us, Jim, up there, that you can't always trust that little clock in the corner of the screen. Sometimes it's a second or two yeah, off, right. but great first half for Virginia. I told you they were fun to watch. Trick plays well, all over yeah. the place. I'm still going to justify my point, though. <laughs> Let's see them. Well, I mean, they try anything. They're not going to muscle the ball in, so they do this when they cross midfield. and It works, usually. It does. I mean, here's Matt Schaub. He's going to throw it to the backup quarterback, Haggins. Throws back to Wally Lundy. Running back, touchdown, Virginia. What's the matter with this? This is great trickery. Now, now here's a little reverse. Here's a little pitch back to the reverse. It's Michael Johnson taking it around the outside. It's a lovely play. Hey, it's misdirection. It's exciting. It's a bowl game. <laughs> Here it is again. Another pitch back. It's a double pass. Hand off to Lundy. Back to Shop. Shop throws deep again to Ryan Sawyer. But it's incomplete. But that's fun football. It's great football. Oh, let's line up. Let me see. Two tight ends, fullback, three yards, and a cloud of dust. No, let's have a little fun. You're right. My point is simply this. I think Bill Musgrave, the offensive coordinator, has done a great job of calling plays as well. Yes, they do have the trick plays, but they also have the slow, methodical. I think they kind of lull you to sleep. Heath Miller, tight ends, caught some nice passes. And if you look, the result of it is West Virginia's had 33 offensive plays. Right. That's the best defense you can have, 33 offensive plays for West Virginia. Come on, you got to agree with me a little there. Well, let me tell you what. If that's the offense, that you like to lull them to sleep. I'm glad you're not my head coach because I'm not going to have a lot of fun. Remember, but I'll tell you what. Remember, I have Nebraska. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's the point. But, but at least it was dynamic in the first half. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was yeah. fun to watch those plays. El Grove pulling those trick plays out. It's exciting. Right, right though. They got to get more than 33 players in the second half. No time to panic if you're the Mountaineers, but it's not exactly the greatest come from behind offense. When we come back, highlights of the thrilling Holiday Bowl last night, plus some coaching news at Kentucky. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Barbershop on VHS and Special Edition DVD this Tuesday. Well, the young and entertaining Virginia Cavaliers surprising the Mountaineers, trying to pull off the fifth upset of bowl season so far. There was an upset yesterday as Nebraska's 40-year run of winning seasons came to an end. And then last night, finally in the 10th bowl game, we had the first team ranked in the top 20 get on the field. That was Kansas State, by far the highest-ranked team playing before New Year's Day. But they had to dodge an upset from pesky Arizona State in the Holiday Bowl. L. Roberson down seven. Watch this play on fourth and ten. He gets smoked. He just throws it up. And James Terry, the flag was on the defender, sets him up for the tying touchdown. Later, that's 27 apiece. Roberson on the slant. Derek Evans 
K-State up 34-27. Last chance, Andrew Walter, who was 28 of 57 on the night. The DP was knocked down, and for the sixth consecutive year, the team down at halftime wins the Holiday Bowl. Bobers in the MVP with four total touchdowns. Mainstay Independence Bowl. Ole Miss in Shreveport against Lil Red and the Huskers. Watch this call. A fake punt. You're up in the third quarter in your own end, and Judd Davies will pull back. Why? Automatic Why? It was, it was an automatic that they had run. It's a bonehead call. Oh, okay, there you I'm not going to justify it. Now he pull back, gets credit for the bonehead call, and Ole Miss right there punches <laughs> it in. Credit. Takes the lead. Well, I mean, let's give blame where it's good, right? We'll credit the blame. <laughs> This play was ruled out of bounds, not an interception. No interference called. That's what Solich wanted. And then Jamal Lord has to chuck it deep one more time. And there is Doug Reeves, who was ruled out of bounds before making the legal interception. And Ole Miss comes from behind. 27-23 win. Nebraska, 43 years of losing. Winning season is over. They lose three consecutive games. Houston ball, Oklahoma State and Southern Mississippi, Josh Fields, the quarterback who came on strong second half of the year to Rashawn Woods. Will he come back or go to the NFL? Well, I think he's ready. I mean, Mark and I have talked about this. Clearly, he's ready for the next he's ready I hope he comes back. Yeah, he's, he's exciting good. to watch. Great player to watch. Well, Tatum Bell was held in check for a lot of the game, but finally in the fourth quarter began to wear down Southern Miss. Knife and through for the touchdown here. And then finally, the balance of the offense of Oklahoma State. They opened him up with a passing game. Then at the end of the game, Tatum Bell, nice run. Nine for 164 for Woods. He was the MVP. First bowl win for Okie State since 1988. That's the Barry Sanders era. You want to talk about Nebraska's loss? You want to talk about K-State's survival? What's on your mind from last night? I'll talk about Nebraska's loss. <laughs> We've all heard about there's going to be changes at Nebraska in terms of the coaching staff and those sorts of things. In my opinion, if you're going to make the changes, now it's time to go all the way in the changes. You're going to make changes on offense. It's time to get an offense that's two-dimensional. It's time to get an offense that can actually challenge people in the passing game. I think the p thing that you know makes people, Nebraska fans across the country, kind of scratch their head is in the first half, Nebraska rushed for 200 yards. He'd be well on their way. Second half got away from what was successful runs for a total of 60 yards in the second half. That's not Nebraska football, Mark. I mean, they typically in the fourth quarter then start rolling on people. They were rolling. Why did they stop rolling? That's the thing you can't figure out. But I want to go back to the Oklahoma State game and Rashawn Woods. And, and yesterday was just the typical game that he has, nine receptions, 164 yards, and a touchdown. But here's a wide receiver, and this is my opinion. We talk about Charles Rogers during the season as a tremendous wide receiver, and he is, and he's already declared for the NFL draft, which will probably be the first wide receiver taken. But as a football player, in my opinion, if I'm going to take a wide receiver, if Rashawn Woods were to come out, he is probably the second best wide receiver in our country, I think, the way that he attacks the ball, the way that he runs his routes. If he comes back next year, I think he should. That's phenomenal. But he is ready for the next step for the NFL. I think he can make that leap and be successful. Yeah, I'm not sure he can really improve by coming back. But I was college football guys. We'd love to see him come back. Absolutely. And you got to salute Arizona State, Dirk Cutter, Andrew Walter, underdog team out of the Pac-10. Gave K-State all it can handle. But Wildcats giving the Big 12 their third win of the bowl season. Only Nebraska didn't Mark, lost. didn't Mark guarantee the Big East would be 5-0? Well, we're at halftime. Virginia, West Virginia's well, it, got to I've got another half to go. I've got another yeah, half to go. Apology for I've got another half to go. Okay. Remember, there is an official trophy for this, and that would be a damaging loss for the Big East if the favorite West Virginia can't get it done. You know? Big 12 represented by Colorado tonight. The Big Ten finally gets a team in action with the Wisconsin Badgers. We're back after this. Vote now on the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. This for the win for Florida State to upset Miami from 43 yards away. He missed it! Wide left! Here's Wallace pumping, looking, running to his right, looking, and he's going to be almost caught. Now he's running at the 25 and runs down the sideline, back to the 10. Now he's giving Brown, goes around to the 10, to the left side, to the 5, touchdown! Crystal's going to throw for him, got to get it off. They go for the ball game. Touchdown! Touchdown! Michael Jenkins on fourth and one! Final play of the game. Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. Count! Count! Goodness. Larry Johnson closing in on the magical number. Gets the toss. Johnson, here he goes! The 
This is 2,000 plus for Larry Johnson. Touchdown, Penn State. And he does it with style. To vote, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. Mountaineers closing with six wins in their last seven games, but Virginia surprising them at halftime down in Charlotte. Some coaching news. Kentucky still needs a head coach. It's getting late. There's a big name out there that they've spoken with and is still in the running. And it's Doug Williams, the head coach at Grambling, very successful three-season run at his alma mater, won 31 games and three SWAC titles last three seasons after really rebuilding the program. He's met with Mitch Barnhart, the AD there, he wants the job apparently, Mark? Yeah, he does want the job, and I think this will make history without a doubt in the Southeast Conference, the first black football coach in the Southeast Conference. But Doug Williams has a history and a great resume in his past. He was a scout at the Jacksonville Jaguars, coached at Navy, NFL Europe. He was under Joe Gibbs, a Hall of Fame football coach, and he was an MVP of the Super Bowl, and he's won at Grambling. And I know Doug personally, and I think he would do an outstanding job there. He's a great recruiter. He's a smart coach. He's already proven he can win. I think this would be a great hire for Kentucky and a great opportunity for Doug Williams, and I think he'll accept it. It seems like a lot of people are not sure about this Kentucky job. I mean, I know they have their probation, those things, but I think Guy Morris did a great job of the hardest thing you have to do with football players and programs that haven't won for a long time is actually convince them that they can win. And I think there's guys on that team that actually think they can win. I mean, you got guys, the battleship's back. I mean, he'll still be under 300 pounds next year. You got Abney back. They, and they are receiver. bowl eligible next year. They're going to yeah, lose some I mean, scholarships. Right. They're still taking hits from those sanctions. But I think here's the key. What, what you get that? from Doug Williams, you get a winner. A guy that's a Super Bowl MVP, a guy that's won at Grambling, a guy that goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they couldn't win and won there. So you've got that's a proven winner. And I think here's a guy that wants the job. Well, the Louisville Courier Journal reporting they have met and will await a possible uh, decision on that uh, uh, coaching a vacancy. We're going to get back to the second half very soon here. Marcus Higgins, the backup quarterback, we showed you throw for one. He's the punt returner. The sixth punt return for a touchdown in 11 bowl games. How about that for a trend? ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. A beautiful day. Erickson Stadium, the first Continental Tire Bowl. A sellout crowd on hand. And the Virginia Cavaliers have a 28-10 lead over the Mountaineers of West Virginia. And Boate, both teams came here today ready to play. And some hard hitting going out of this football game on both sides. A little celebration as well. But it's been the Cavaliers who have excelled in terms of execution on their unusual or trick plays. Hi, everybody. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Leeson's down on the sidelines. Randy, Virginia really has kept West Virginia back on its heels with their trick plays, haven't well, they? Well, their trick plays have worked very well, and they knew coming into this game that Virginia was going to be able to do that, but it's really kept them from being aggressive on defense. All right. Second half is coming up, and the kickoff is about to happen right now. Let's see if... West Virginia can get back into this one here in Charlotte. West Virginia will receive the opening kickoff. Todd Kirk Smith ready to kick it away. And here's the kickoff. Philip Braxton. Penalty marker down early. May be for a hold across the 25. Braxton out near the 26-yard line to get a penalty marker down. Holding the call against West Virginia. So <laughs> in comeback mode, not the way to start out of the opening kickoff. Well, we talked earlier about how much these penalties hurt West Virginia because of the style of offense they run. They need good field position. Holding on the receiving team at the distance of the goal. First down. The numbers in the first half again West Virginia one of the leading rushing teams in the country number two overall just 106 yards rushing in that first half Wayne very balanced numbers the score doesn't indicate that because Virginia has had the special teams touchdown and a much shorter field to work with remember West Virginia averages 287 yards rushing per game Avon Coborn tries to cut it back toward the middle breaks a tackle. 
across the 25, brought down just short of the 30 near the 28-yard line. Winborn made the stop downfield. It was Andrew Hoffman who missed the tackle at the point of attack. Nice job by Coburn. When he takes the ball so deep in the backfield, he can see the whole thing develop. Look at that hole open up to the right side. There's the missed tackle there. But one of the advantages to getting the ball deep in the backfield, you see everything develop in front of you. Opening drive, third quarter. Coburn again. Attitude run right at the defense. Mike Leeson, you had a chance to talk with uh, Rich Rodriguez at halftime. What did he have to say? Well, Wayne, even though there's only 30 minutes of football left, he said he will not alter the game plan. He feels they have to execute better. But I'll tell you this, he was very upset with the physical play or lack thereof. He said they're a very physical football team, and he feels that Virginia has not seen his true football team. So I guess we'll see what happens in the next 30 minutes. And an ominous number there on the bottom portion of your screen if you're a West Virginia fan. And that one reason is because they aren't a real throwing team. It's that much harder to come back when you're down. Coburn again trying to follow the wall of blockers had to cut it back and Rich Benison makes the tackle at the 36 yard line. Take a look at some of the key plays in the first half. We've talked about the trickery that Virginia has used today. They've done it very well. The touchdown West Virginia tried to do it and they aren't as used to it. They don't execute it here. The missed field goal but West Virginia was off sides that led to this touchdown right here because Virginia is doing such a good job of playing with the trickery West Virginia has lost all of their aggression and they're sitting back on their heels. But I got to ask you what does Al Groh have left in the trick bag. Well I don't know if he needs anything else what he needs now with a 28 to 10 lead is just to play solid fundamental football. Coburn nowhere to go on third down. Rashid Marshall with a late toss Blackstock and Robertson and again the outside linebackers Randy and the cornerbacks on the flank of the defense for Virginia and Newby uh, one of the extra defensive backs they bring in in passing situations have been outstanding Blackstock and Robertson as you said those are the outside backers they've had a big day Robertson was an inside backer got moved to the outside after game 11 and that's been a big help to this defense. Marcus Higgins had a 69 yard punt return for a touchdown earlier today went nowhere there Adam Jones delivered the hit 42 yard punt and it'll be first down for the Cavaliers of the 25 yard line of their own territory Erickson Stadium in beautiful Charlotte North Carolina the Continental Tire Bowl better than 73,000 on hand and it has been a celebration of college football in the Queen City of the South all week. First down, first possession of the third quarter for the Virginia offense. Quick toss to the flank. Sawyer gets a nice block. Case Luzar out in front of that play, a, an H back, if you will, helped to spring that play for the first down. Davis and Frazier collaborate on the stop. First and 10, and Al Crow stopped by to talk to Mike Gleason. Mike, what did he say? Wayne, he said, just take it one play at a time. Don't look up at the scoreboard, even though it's 28 to 10 right now, and don't try to win the game with big plays, although I'm sure you'll take a few, but uh, he said, <laughs> just keep playing football down by down, and everything should be okay. You know, Randy Wright said something like that just a moment ago. I wonder if Al Crow got it from Randy. Oh, great minds think alike, oh, right? You're right. You are a great mind. Lundy hammering away up the middle. Well, it's been the Virginia specialty plays, Randy, that have made the difference, keeping West Virginia off balance. The reverse is the reverse action. And, of course, this one right here for the first touchdown of the game, Marcus Higgins. And then you flake, fake the reverse right there and keep it. And you've got the defense. You've got a defense that's basically on its heels guessing what the offense is going to do great execution of the specialty plays we've talked about Al Groh and the pro style of offense with the time between the regular season and a bowl game he's very good at putting in new things Schaub fakes the toss didn't fool the defense this time up church flushes him hits Brandon Isaiah the fullback out of the backfield and he's up across the 40 to the 44 yard line on a gain of three yards Angel Estrada the safety made the stop one thing that works very much against West Virginia when you're down 28 to 10 
Virginia may have to help them get back into this game. It may have to come on special teams because Virginia is not a team that turns the ball over a lot. They were plus 13 in that category. So both these teams do a nice job of not turning it over. Just 22 turnovers in 13 games this season for the Virginia Cavaliers. Sawyer, bubble screen, first down to the wide receiver. Sawyer, Zach Yarbrough, the center, and the quarterback, Matt Schaub, our roommates. And they basically hook up on that one. Yarbrough to Schaub to Sawyer for the first down. A die shaken up on the play. Jamal a die. This is a well-designed pass play that Virginia has executed a couple of times here today. Just a little simple screen out to the left, but Schaub gets the ball to his receiver, and it's well blocked, and it's turned out to be a key first down, and they've worked it a number of times today. Jamal Adai shaking up. It looked like he has a stinger. And, you know, we've seen some hitting here today. These two teams are really going after each other physically. Ooh, look at that block. He comes up, and I think you're right. He just was a little out of position when he left his feet to make that tackle. It brought Sawyer down, but not a picture-perfect hit by a die. Virginia on the move again. Lundy hit in the backfield. James Davis, the outside linebacker, Dirty Davis, made the cleanup play in the backfield. Nice job by this West Virginia defense shifting over. I think it caught the Virginia offensive line by surprise. These guys are all going to move over this way right as the ball gets ready to be snapped. And then you see Davis just firing right through that gap. And that confusion kept the offensive line from picking him up, and he capitalized on it. Virginia playing on an 18-point lead early going third quarter. Well, it's important, like Al Groh said, you don't need to get it all back in one play. Loss of four in the previous play. Schaub looking around, takes it himself. Schaub showing pretty nimble feet. Gets about five yards out of that to the 49-yard line. Arthur Harrison finally tracked him down. That's the kind of quarterbacking decision that Al Groh wants from Matt Schaub. It looked as though he wanted to throw the ball deep was almost going to force it in there, but at the last minute, decided against it, scrambled, picked up six yards, but he didn't force the ball into an interception. Third and nine. Cavaliers have been awfully good on third downs here today. They came in hitting 40% for the season. Motion from Case Luzon. Blitz on. Shaw dumps it off quickly. Wally Lundy. Wins the race to the corner, and more. Breaks a tackle to the sidelines, to the end zone. Touchdown! Screen teams, they're good draw teams, and this was a screen executed perfectly by Schaub to let the rush come to him. Then he dumps the ball over to Lundy. Lundy is such a good receiver and a running back after he catches the ball. Connor Hughes, a line drive, a low liner, but over the crossbar for the extra point. The Virginia Cavaliers pick up where they left off in the first half. Wally Lundy, his third touchdown. None better than this. A spin move to get by King. Lundy to the end zone from 48 yards out and a celebration from the quarterback. Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, Mike Leeson back in Charlotte, Virginia in surprising fashion over the nation's 13th ranked team, 35 to 10. Better than 73,000, 73, 535, a stadium record here at Erickson in Charlotte. Kurt Smith getting sent to kick it away for Virginia. He's been busy as a kickoff specialist. Each kick, good leverage and depth into this kick. Smith, short of the 20-yard line. 
flying to the football. Ottawa Anderson, a wide receiver, moments ago. Take a look at how well Virginia sets this up right here. Grant White is going to come through unblocked. The whole interior here, they're going to let their men come and then drift out in front of Lundy. You don't execute it any better than what these guys do right here. Lundy gets the ball. He's got blockers in front of him. He becomes a running back now and just uses those skills with a little help from some missed tackles downfield. You can't draw up a screen any better than that. True freshman. Well, at this stage of the season, aren't they at least sophomores by now? Well, if you ask the coach, they are. That's for <laughs> sure. Marshall looking to make something happen through the air, going deep, intercepted. Armando Curry inside the 10. The Virginia defense turns a big play. 26 yard return. Muffin Curry, the smallest of the Cavaliers. Al Gro uh, excuse me, Rich Rodriguez told us that he didn't want to change what his system was. He just wanted to execute better. Well, when you're behind 35 to 10, you have to change, and that's not where Rashid Marshall has his strength. He just throws the ball a little bit high into, into a massive wave of blue jerseys. And as you said, Armando Curry, the smallest man out there, comes up with a hit with a huge play, looking to put the final nail in the coffin here. Split backs and first and goal of the nine. McGrew, the man in motion. Weeks, student body right. Got a convoy of blocking, but the Mountaineers rise to the occasion, strung out the play well. Loss of one back to the 10 yard line. Adam Lenort led the way. All coaches put an emphasis on sudden change defense. When something happens and you've got to go out and play defense after a sudden change, how well do we respond? Rich Rodriguez's Mountaineers did not respond after the missed field goal and they were off sides, gave up an easy touchdown. He can't afford for his defense not to respond right now. They have got to keep Virginia out of the end zone if they want to stay in the game. Second and goal from the 11. Isaiah. Brandon Isaiah, sophomore out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Brought down by Adam Lenort. Gain of about three down to the eight-yard line. Third down and goal to go. It would be perhaps a moral victory for the West Virginia defense to force no more than a field goal here. They need to do something to get the momentum, which is clearly on the Cavalier side, over to their side. A sack, a turnover, a fumble. They need to create a big play. Again, this is where Virginia likes to go to Heath Miller. They're big tight end. He's over there on the right side. Shovel pass and going nowhere. I want to tell you, Brandon Isaiah was just leveled by Tim Love. A loss of a yard or two back to the line. And the field goal unit comes on. Well, pretty nice stand here by this Mountaineer defense. A little trick play, the shovel pass. And as you said, Tim Love not surprised at all. He's trying to play both the quarterback and the pitch back. And I'd say he played that very well. Connor Hughes for a 27-yard field goal attempt. Out of the hole of the quarterback, Matt Shaw. Connor Hughes has it to the uprights. It's good. Tack on another three points to the total for UVA. The unranked Cavaliers leading the 13th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers 38 to 10. Avon Coborn, one of the top running backs in the country, can he lead the Mountaineers back into this one? ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by the all-new Accord from Honda. It's more Accord than ever. And by Wendy's Late Night Pickup Window, where you can eat great even late. Back at Charlotte, North Carolina. On the kickoff by Kurt Smith. Into the end zone, about a yard deep. Philip Braxton. Right down to the 20 yard line. Boy, there is some tenacious hitting going on to the kicking teams here today. Virginia has a surprising cushion over West Virginia in the third.
Thanks for the ride, Beamer. Anytime, Scott. See you. Playing this month on Dish On Demand, pay-per-view. Reign of Fire. Hello, Michael. I need you to come sooner or later. Michael's here! Halloween Resurrection. I gotta congratulate you. Oh! Undisputed. Take a break from routine TV. Order a pay-per-view movie from Dish On Demand. Now available for the first time ever on Dish Network, NHL Center Ice, over 1,000 NHL games, plus select Stanley Cup playoff coverage for three payments of $53 each. All 30 teams on the quest for Lord Stanley's Cup. Call 1-800-333-DISH, 1-800-333-3474. Order NHL Center Ice from Dish On Demand pay-per-view and take a break from routine TV. These fans have been here for the better part of a week in Charlotte celebrating the UVA fans really fired up now at a big pep rally last night downtown Charlotte. I wouldn't think that they could have any more fun today than what they've had all week but I, I think I'm wrong. I think they are enjoying it even more. From the 20 first down. The fake to Coborn. Rashid Marshall gets out across the 25. Mike Gleason with a special guest who has a connection to two of the key running backs in this game. Mike? That's right, Wayne. And Wally Lundy and Avon Coburn have both played at the same high school, Holy Cross High School, New Jersey. And I found their high school coach, Tom Madeira, and his daughter, TJ. I guess I really expected to talk more about Avon right now, but I guess uh, Wally's the story here, Coach. Yeah, he's having a good game with three touchdowns. And that last touchdown uh, on that screen pass was pretty impressive. Now, you come here with... You're patronizing which team? I mean, what your allegiance goes to Avon? I mean, Avon 5,000 yards or Wally just a rookie? I've got more ties to West Virginia. Kenny Sandor plays for West Virginia on the all starting right guard on the offensive line. And I spent three years at West Virginia as a graduate assistant. But it's tough. I'm rooting for number 33 as much as I'm rooting for number 28. You know, the West Virginia coaches said everyone knows about the 5,000 yards rushing, but very few people know about his work ethic. I guess you could add something to that. He's got a tremendous work ethic. Uh, you know, you watch him block for other people. You watch him run pass patterns, even in practice. I mean, he's always there ever since he was in high school. You know, when we'd, when we'd practice, he'd sprint 40 yards every time in practice. Uh, he's just a tremendous kid. All right, Coach, enjoy the game. Thank you. Okay, Wayne, let's go back to you. All right, thank you, Mike. Avon Coburn and coaches are excited about what he does without the football as much as they are with what he does with the football made a good block on the flank of that play and the game to Tory Johnson on the pass play Angelo Crowell the linebacker made the stop near the 40 yard line gain of five. Take a look at Coburn not real big but boy is he a complete player such an unselfish play he runs great routes and I think that will help him at the next level he's got good hands good routes picks up blitzes in the passing game and Wayne I got to think that high school coach has to be pretty successful you have backs like Lundy and Coburn running for you bubble screen Derek Smith has to make a couple of men miss and gets close to the first down well that was a resourceful little spin move he made there to get close two plays ago Coburn delivers a block right there in the flank of the play well he's such an unselfish player and whenever you have a new coach come in like Rich Rodriguez did last year you need to find the key players in the system that can buy into what you're talking and teaching and help everybody else buy into it and Avon Coburn is one of those guys third and a little bit less than two Coburn's got the first down looking for more yank down inside Cavalier territory near the 48 yard line Capital One Bowl week continues tonight on ESPN. Eight Eastern, two of the top running backs of the nation lead their teams. It's Chris Brown of the Colorado Buffaloes, Anthony Davis of the Wisconsin Badgers at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. A coaching rivalry there. Gary Barnett at Colorado now used to be at Northwestern, and he and Alvarez had some massive duels when he was in the Big Ten. Wilson Quincy Wilson gets the call on a counter move to the right side picks up about seven yards Almondo Muffin Curry made the stop along with the, again you take a look at what the way that 
Virginia rallies to the ball. You can tell they're a team playing with some momentum, although West Virginia starting to crank in a nice drive. Here. Well, you can afford to fly around and take some chances when you're up 38 to 10. Now, you don't have to, but you play with, with a lot less sense of urgency. Second down. Marshall on the keeper. Got the first down to the 34-yard line of Virginia, but the defense for the Cavaliers has been very good here today. They've been outstanding. They've really shut down Rasheed Marshall, and Virginia, West Virginia has had to try and go to some other things that really is not in their system, but whether it's been Colbert or Marshall or the passing game, nothing has really worked or gone right for West Virginia. Armando Curry with the interception to set up a field goal. Running hard, Wilson. Quincy Wilson, the son of the former Chicago Bears middle linebacking great Otis Wilson, whom we uh, had an opportunity to talk to last night. He, he sacked you a time or two uh, over the course of the 80s. Didn't you know, he? we were watching practice, and he came over, and, and I said I had to lay down on my back so I could recognize him because that's <laughs> where I saw him most of the time. Well, Randy was a quarterback with the Green Bay Packers, and Otis Wilson, an all-pro linebacker from the uh, Super Bowl champion 85 Bears. Second down here. Marshall, is he changing the play here, Randy, or just calling the protection? Probably calling direction. Rasheed Marshall looked like almost a busted play there, though they do fake that handoff, and then quarterback keeps it. He got about a yard down to the 31-yard line. Randy, you would think that, again, the big gun here, Avon Coborn, but as we looked at this and as we've talked at halftime, the quarterback is going to have to step up and make the difference for West Virginia in this circumstance here where they're down by such a large margin. And he's going to have to do it through the passing game. He's very dangerous with his legs, but he's going to have to make some big plays through the air for West Virginia to get back in this game. He can't do it all with his feet. Inside of two minutes and ten seconds, third quarter. Third down, West Virginia. Blitz coming, Armando Curry. Nice release over the middle. Braxton shakes one defender. Hit inside the five, wrapped up near the three-yard line. Jermaine Hardy made the stop, 28-yard pass play, and boy, did they need that. Well, we just talked about making some big plays in the passing game. Braxton has been the guy that Marshall has felt most comfortable with, with Henderson being hurt. Take a look at the time he has in the cushion Braxton has with Willie Davis playing off of him by five or six yards. Man-to-man -man coverage. You missed the tackle. It's going to be a big play. But they're going into the Cavalier end, the Cavalier fans on this side of the stadium. Well, it's going to be hard for the linemen to hear the signals on the floor of the stadium now. Marshall calling the play of the line. He's got a slot at the top of the screen. A handoff up the middle, and just one of those attitude runs driving forward. Not a whole lot there, boy. Virginia came in with a suspect run defense. Quincy Wilson burrowed his way down to the one, but no farther. You talk about it being suspect, giving up over 200 yards a game. Each one of these running plays that doesn't get into the end zone takes another 30 to 40 seconds off the clock. My point being, West Virginia, or Virginia's been much better against the run than we expected here today. Wilson, the single back, but it's a quarterback who takes the snap. Penalty markers are down. Usually it's for a false start by the offense in this circumstance. And if that's the case, boy, that would hurt. Offside on the defense. That's why they refuse. They'll take the result of the play. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. Offsides on Virginia. West Virginia reaches the end zone. We didn't see anybody jump, so take a look right there. That's where they're going to call is the offsides. Could be this one right there. Either way, they were lined up offsides. And nobody how, jumped. How can you tell he made it over the goal line under the mass of humanity? Extra point attempt is blocked. And recovered, I believe, by Virginia, but the blocked extra point Leaves the score 38 to 16. Rashid Marshall marshaled his team on an 80 yard 13 play drive to the end zone. Well, they've been cranked up all week and they're really excited now. The fans of both sides, as finally the West Virginia contingent has something to cheer about. The field marshal brought them to the end zone.
Trying to get him back into the game, but this field general has been outstanding here today, Matt Shaw. Boy, what, what a gentleman he was to talk to yesterday. Really has a level head on his shoulders and pretty quick feet that he uses yeah. right here. Not known as a runner, but boy, he's bought time and he just throws the ball so well. Great touch and a little better arm strength than I thought he had coming into this game. I've been very impressed with him. Todd James booting it away. Twin safeties back deep for Virginia. And this one uh, hooking out of play. So the penalty marker down. The 13th ranked team in the nation is down 38 to 16. Now we saw a nice comeback by Kansas State last night to win a bowl game, the sixth ranked team in the nation. But they weren't down by 38-16 in the second half. They weren't down like this. And <laughs> I think coming back takes two parts. Number one, your offense has to score. Your defense has to stop them. And West Virginia has struggled in that area. And I would say when you're a running team, as Rich Rodriguez has here, he needs his defense not just to stop Virginia, but to take the ball away. They need to stop them quickly. Taking the ball away is going to be a little more difficult because, as we mentioned, Virginia doesn't turn it over a lot. They need to stop them with three and outs. They can't afford to stop them if Virginia can pick up three, four, five first downs because that's going to take too much time off the clock. West Virginia, 34 turnovers this season. Schaub, Ryan Sawyer got a first down out to the 48-yard line. Continental Tire Bowl, the first annual. 13th ranked West Virginia against Virginia. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason. Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. A stadium record better than 73,535 on hand. And you look at this, it's UVA that's got 20,000 people. Boy, they sound like they've got 60 yeah, right now. Well, you know, they've also got 38 points on the board. That supplements that sound you're hearing. Schaub, good protection. Late over the middle, but right between the eight and the nine on tight end Heath Miller's jersey. James Davis arrived on the scene. Inside West Virginia territory to the 46 on a gain of about six yards. Wayne, this is vintage. Al Crow offense. You're ahead. You don't sit on it. You don't play conservative. You keep throwing the ball. Virginia Cavaliers enjoy a 38-16 advantage, much to the light of the... 20,000 plus from Charlottesville. Fourth quarter coming up. There are a lot of great bowl games around the country. Hard to match the excitement that this one has generated in the Queen City of the South, Charlotte, North Carolina. Wally Lundy, how much does Al Groh have left in the trick back? He's got at least one more reverse for a first down. And Lundy, the freshman, has been outstanding here today. Picks it up near the 41-yard line. Collins and Frazier on the stop. So West Virginia fans hanging in there with their Mountaineers. Oh, they were coming early. We got over here real early this morning, Randy, and they were lined up to get in here. Boy, it's so nice because the stadium is so close to downtown. Several people walking over along the way and enjoying the beautiful weather, and it's just been a great atmosphere. I'm sure they'll enjoy the rest of the weekend after the game as well. They'll enjoy it more if the uh, Mountaineers come back, but I don't think they're going to be allowed to. Wally Lundy following his blocking beautifully. Down the sidelines inside the 20. Near the 17-yard line of West Virginia. 24-yard gash. Lance Frazier made the stop. Nice job of creating this hole. An excellent cut by Lundy. Designed to go up the middle. Cuts to the outside and untouched until well into the secondary. You really have to respect what this Virginia offense is doing. It starts with their head coach. They're not sitting back. They're continuing to play aggressive football, and it's paying off. Opening minute, fourth quarter. UVA, since grabbing the momentum of this game midway through the first quarter, has been playing on an edge. Beautiful play back, Schaub, getting blitzed by Angel Estrada, throws it away. And Schaub again showing good maturity, Randy, when he's been flushed at times today, when the receivers aren't open downfield. He gets out of the tackle box, he gets rid of the football. Well, you can see why he's only thrown seven interceptions all year. He doesn't force things in there. He's got a very accurate arm. 
a level head on his shoulders when the play action fake did not hold the defense. That's usually a one man route. When that wasn't open, he just throws the ball away. Second and 10 at the West Virginia 17. Sean Flush steps up himself. And is brought down near the 15 yard line, gain of a couple of yards. West Virginia changing things up a little bit, bringing pressure from different areas, Randy. Trying to be a little more aggressive. Whenever an offense has a drive and has moved the ball like Virginia has, you can't sit back in a vanilla defense and let them keep doing that. It's up to you to start making the adjustments, and most often that means bringing pressure. Patrick Estes comes in at tight end. They've been running a lot of two tight end sets on the offensive line. Those two tight ends have combined for 12 touchdown receptions between them. Case Luzar, the man in motion. Shaw sets up a screen. Wally Lundy gets a one block, and then is ridden down from behind, short of the 10-yard line. Ernest Hunter, defensive tackle in for Jason Davis, made the stop, and it's fourth down. Well, again, this West Virginia defense has kept the Cavaliers out of the end zone, but take a look, 12-48 and counting down, West Virginia's taking some valuable time, or excuse me, Virginia's taking the time off the clock that West Virginia really can't afford to let them do. No question. Time a huge factor, and, and again, the point is, a team whose primary modus operandi is running the football is in a real tough spot. Al Groh mentioned to us, he said he felt one of the keys for Virginia today would have to be, we've got to play on the lead. We can't let them play on the lead. I think even he was surprised how big a lead they had, how early, and how that came about. Connor Hughes has it through the uprights. 30-yard field goal to extend the margin to 41-16 to Virginia. The Cavaliers keep rolling through Charlotte on a beautiful sun-splashed afternoon. Boy, the Cavalier faithful have been waving their paraphernalia here today. Their Cavaliers play on a hefty lead over the 13th ranked team in the nation. Kurt Smith kicking it away. West Virginia needs a number of big plays to even get back into this one. Smith. Derek Smith across the 15, and the coverage units have been very sound for Virginia here today as well. Alex Seals, perhaps the best of the coverage unit for West Virginia. Monday, Capital One Bowl Week continues with two games on ESPN. The day begins with College Game Day Bowl Special presented by Outback at 1.30 Eastern. Two Eastern, the SEC West champion Arkansas Razorbacks take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. 5.30 Eastern. It's the Wake Forest team in Deacon's defense looking to stop Ontario Smith and a tough Oregon offense in the second annual Seattle Bowl. First down, football just short of the 20-yard line for the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Avon Coborn. Pollard is blocking pretty well, but again, the Cavaliers had the boundary side snuffed out pretty well. Gain of about five yards, maybe six. Hoffman and Schmidt from the defensive line collaborate on the stop. Wayne, you can see what Virginia is doing defensively. They're not really penetrating across the line of scrimmage. They're just tying up those blockers and playing a lateral east and west game, not wanting to give up the creases and the big hits. Especially when you're a lineman in a 3-4 defense, all you want to do is occupy blockers. Let the linebackers flow to the ball. Derek Smith's spin move gets by Blackstock, but then he is buried on the play. Almondo Curry. But it's a first down. What a hit by Curry, however. Good thought process. Get the ball to a wide receiver on the outside. Try to get him into a one-on-one -on -one and then break a tackle and make a big play. Smith could not do that out here, as you said. Just an excellent open field tackle by Curry. First down, football just short of the 31. Coborn, and they reverse it. Aaron Neal. Good speed, and he stumbles across the 50 into Virginia territory to the 47-yard line. Chenard Newby on the undercut move made the tackle 22-yard gain. Nice job of Neal taking the reverse, following his blockers, and then weaving his way through the blue jerseys. And that was a big gain. And remember, in the college game, when you make a first down, the clock stops, so they're conserving a little time with the bigger the play they get. 
Marshall has called his own number. Hurdles one defender, but is forced out of bounds. And again, we continue to see the flow by the Virginia defense. And Randy, we talked a little bit about Daryl Blackstock earlier and how his job is to run upfield and get the quarterback. What we've seen today is he's played a little wider, perhaps, and not going directly on a slanted line to the quarterback. He's a little wider in his uh, pursuit today. Well, if you widen out like that, the angle is too big for the lineman to block you. So really what you've done is you've forced the backs to cut upfield. Bubble screen. Montclair Henderson. Almost had a touchdown at the end of the first half. This one gets down to the 25 of Virginia. Jerton Evans on the stop, 20 yards the game. Henderson has been bothered by an ankle and a knee injury, missed the last two games, but came back and is healthy now. He is the leading receiver for this team, but they're doing a nice job now of getting the wide receivers involved in this offense. Coborn, little stop and go, dives down to the 20 yard line, pick up a five. Resourceful run by Avon Coborn. Well, you saw a good example there of this Virginia defense with the respect they have for the West Virginia speed. They're just playing outside, forcing these guys to the inside and letting the flow catch up to them. They played a very disciplined game defensively. Two tight ends on the line. Second down and five. Marshall fake to Coburn. Makes it straight ahead again. Design play for the quarterback. This time getting two, maybe three yards at the most. Crowell and Bettison, two inside linebackers responding for UVA. Angelo Crowell, his older brother Jermaine, an outstanding receiver at Virginia, and now a standout receiver for the Detroit Lions of the NFL. Well, Angelo Crowell told us he had so much respect for Al Gro when he took over this program because he knew he coached in the NFL. He knew what he was talking about, and it gave him that instant credibility. They reverse. Braxton picking his way to the 15, and it appears he's got the first down. Jerton Evans makes the tackle. Now, that's a gain of about three, maybe four yards. When you do all that reverse action, you expect more, don't you? Well, what really happens, though, is Blackstock comes up, and he avoids the block, but he still forces Braxton to come to the inside. So Blackstock didn't get the tackle, but he really did a nice job on the play. He really blew up the play. And again, he got wider than wide, essentially, on that play as far as a linebacker is concerned. And as you said, if you're only picking up a couple yards on a reverse, you expect to get more than that. Avon Coburn, they try to open it up the middle, but not that time. Brian White made the stop in the linebacking core for West Virginia. And with each one of these running plays that the Mountaineers are running, you see that clock continuing to tick down under nine minutes now. I beg your pardon, Brian White for Virginia made the stop. Second down. Marshall looking to the end zone. Off the hands of his intended receiver. And that was the tight end, Josh Bailey. And a well-designed play, and Rich Rodriguez, his kid just haven't been able to get it done. Well, nice job. Bailey's right here. He's going to fake down as Marshall comes back, and as he comes out, he's going to wind up over here, and he's really open, and Marshall just misses an opportunity here. I think Bailey could have got that ball into the end zone. It was a well-designed play. You just have to hit that receiver when he's that open. Marshall. Hit in the backfield, thrown down. Penalty marker down on the play. Andrew Hoffman would have none of the quarterback draw of Rashid Marshall. Here's a penalty marker on the field. Face mask against Virginia. That will nullify the first sack of the day. First true sack. Face mask on the defense. Five yards from the previous five. Take a look at the face mask here. Marshall runs up. It was Huffman that came in. There's the face mask. Clearly has it with his right hand. Let's go of it quickly, but a good call by the official. That's kind of tough to see. Good job by the official seeing that throwing the flag. Sometimes you get a back like Marshall who's so quick and moves so fast that you don't think you're going to grab him by the face mask. You're not trying to, and all of a sudden his head's just there. Third and inches. 
37 yards on nine carries for Rashid Marshall. Neither one of those two are very impressive. Only nine carries. Coburn looking for the end zone. And not finding it. Coburn got about three yards, however. And enough for the first down. Jerton Evans made the stop, so this drive continues for West Virginia. But again, the Mountaineers are down 41-16. We have a little over eight minutes to go in the game. Wayne right now Grove told us yesterday that if after the game, West Virginia was happy with the play of Rasheed Marshall, they didn't do a good job. He would much rather than be happy with their tailback play, not the quarterback play. Marshall with nine carries, 37 yards. They're not very happy with his play. Hoffman and Crowell deny Coburn the end zone there. Take a look here. There's really no place for Coburn to go. Good pursuit. Some solid hard hitting going on down there. Even though they're ahead 41 to 16, they're not playing easy at all. Second down and goal to go. Chief Marshall changing the call. Coburn to the end zone. Touchdown. Avon Coburn reaches the end zone. They ought to go for two here, they Wayne. Won't. Try and get this to a 41 to 24 game. That 17 point differential would mean just two touchdowns and a potential field goal. I would anticipate that's what they'll do. And Marshall's going to stay on the field with the offense. But again, what we were talking about earlier. You come out and you're trailing at the start of the second half by a hefty margin. It's 28 to 10. You're a running team. That's what you do best. Rich Rodriguez said we've never run this system. We've never run in this system more than we had this year. It's a tough road to go, even though they put a couple of touchdowns on the board here in the second half. Virginia wants a timeout. Timeout, Virginia. And they will talk it over defensively. Avon Coburn moments ago trying to get West Virginia back into it. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Continental Tire. They're not just tires, they're Continental Tires. And by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? Beautiful sunshine overhead. Erickson Stadium, downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. The inaugural Continental Tire Bowl and Virginia upsetting West Virginia. West Virginia has just scored on a touchdown plunge by Avon Coborn and Rich Rodriguez and company going for two here to cut the deficit to 17 if they can. Slot to the top of your screen, single receiver to the bottom. That's Nastasi at the bottom. They fake the run. Marshall, does he have, he's got two blockers in front of him. But he doesn't have the angle to the end zone. Outstanding play by Brennan Schmidt, the redshirt freshman from Arlington, Virginia. Denying West Virginia the two point conversion. Wayne, I think West Virginia here is as they tried to trick Virginia, run to the outside, but yet run pass option. You see the tight end Johnson who was open, but Marshall really not looking into the end zone and at all. Braxton was open on the back line of the end zone as well. You've got such you have to make such quick decisions down there. The window of opportunity closes very quickly. Now I think West Virginia's got to start thinking onside kick. They're down by 19 points. They got to get the ball back. They can't afford to give it back to Virginia's offense. You have to take some big chances here. And again, when you're behind like this, Randy, and you're a running team like West Virginia, second best running team in the nation, you have to come out of your character, basically, to get back into this game. You have to become a passing team. It's a lot harder for a running team to become a passing team than it is for a passing team to start running the ball. I think Virginia here is expecting the onside kick as they have 10 players up within seven yards of where the line to gain would be, which is the 45 yard line there. And a leaping grab is made by Shinard Newby, a veteran safety senior of Dendron, Virginia. ESPN game track. 
take a look at it. Wally Lundy, third touchdown of the day. This one off a pass reception. Beautiful spin move. 48 yards for the score. And the Virginia defense has played so well today, forcing two West Virginia turnovers, including that one by Armando Curry that set up a field goal. Wait, 10 points off of the turnovers. That doesn't count. The Brax, the, the Hagen's punt return for the touchdown also. So 17 points really have been the difference right here, especially when that punt return came. The punt return basically turned the game around in the second quarter. It was a seesaw affair up until then. Wally Lundy running like a senior, true freshman. Capital One Bowl week continues tonight on ESPN at 8 Eastern, two of the top running backs of the nation. Lead their teams in the 10th annual Alamo Bowl, presented by MasterCard. Chris Brown and the 14th ranked Colorado Buffaloes beat Anthony Davis and the Wisconsin Badgers at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. It's Chris Brown, one of the outstanding backs, missed the last couple of games of the season, but is healthy for this one. It'll be great to see him in there. He finished, what, second to uh, Larry Johnson of the Heisman, or he was one of the finalists. He, or not in the Heisman, but in the uh, Dope Walker Award. Quick move up the middle, not enough for the first down here. Back to Chris Brown. He's only a junior also, and if he had not been hurt and had been able to play a complete season, I'm sure he would have been a little higher in that Heisman race. They're giving a workout to Wally Lundy. Cavaliers, third down, two to go. And he has paid off for Al Groh and company. 89 yards on 19 carries. Well, I have really been impressed with his maturity. This kid is a true freshman, yeah. but he's got a great presence on the field. Speaking of maturity, Billy McMullen, one of the leaders of this football team, all ACC wide receiver, went down early in this ball game with an elbow injury, has not returned. And Lundy gets the first down as they continue to shred the West Virginia front. Wayne, you take a look at McMullen. Look at that, guys. 210 receptions in his career. He came into the game with 209, needing eight to set the all-time record and got hurt on that first one, and he will fall short of that. That's that's too bad, but boy, what a leader he's been for this team. He's a senior, and Al Crow says he'll be one of those guys. You'll see. He'll make the next level, and he'll be around for a long time because he's a guy you can take to the game on Sunday. In it, it, other words, he'll play special teams for you. He'll block downfield for you, that kind of thing. He can do a lot more until he develops into a starting wide receiver. He can help you in many ways. Time wound down on the play clock. I believe West uh, Virginia got a timeout call. Nope. Game on the offense. They did not. I thought, thought they were going to get timeout called. They did not. You know, that's a great point Al Groh was telling us. He's a guy you could take to the game. You say, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, in the NFL, you have 53 on your roster, but you have inactives. You can only dress 45. He's a guy you could take to the game. He's a guy that you could bring. You've got a list of inactives. He's a guy when you sit in that conference room, you're taking him. First penalty against Virginia. A delay of game, first and 15 now. McGrew, the man in motion. Lundy again, and why not? Gain of two down to the 40-yard line. Well, Charlotte Native is on the injured list, but is a prominent man in Virginia plans, and that's the defensive end, Chris Candy. For more on that, let's get down to Mike Gleason. Mike? That's right, Wayne. He played at Charlotte Latin. He focused on basketball until his junior year. His dad didn't let him hit the weight room until after high school. He used to tell him that uh, Herschel Walker used to do a lot of sit-ups and push-ups, and that should be good enough for him. He arrived at Virginia at 6'7", 236. Last year, he played at 265. Now he's up to 290, only a sophomore. That's the most tackles, uh, uh, eight tackles a game. That's the most in the ACC of her defensive lineman. Mike London, the defensive line coach, says Candy has as much long-term promise as any player on this Virginia roster. He sure does, and they're very high on Chris Candy, and of course he's disappointed he wasn't able to play here at his hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina. Economics major 67290. I, I would oh say he's got gosh. NFL size, doesn't Boy, that, he? That's Simeon Rice kind yes. of size. That is, is big. Yeah, he's going to be something else. And is pretty good right now. Second team all ACC, as Mike mentioned. Third down coming up here for Virginia. I've been really impressed with the quarterback, Matt Shaw. Not just his decision making in his arm but he also has shown better feet than he led us to believe he's a smart runner he knows yep. when to run and he knows when he can try and get the big play and when he needs to just get down after picking up a first down Lundy for his fourth touchdown of the game 31 yards The 
But this offensive line for Virginia has just had an outstanding day. As you see, Lundy with his fourth touchdown, two through the air. That is second one on the ground. This offensive line, though, very young. Three freshmen playing in that line, a couple of sophomores. Their one senior, Mike Mullins, is not playing today, and they have controlled the line of scrimmage all game. Yeah, they put in Brad Butler, a true freshman, to fill Mullins' spot at right tackle. The extra point is good by Connor Hughes. Oh, yes, a pat on the back from the head coach, Al Groh. Wally Lundy. Look out, Virginia. The next great running back in Cavalier history has arrived, and he's Wally Lundy. 31 yards to score. Welcome back to the Continental Tire Bowl in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. 13th ranked West Virginia against Virginia. Erickson Stadium, Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Mike Gleason. And the Virginia Cavalier fans are celebrating. They're going to take that piece of hardware, the inaugural Continental Bowl trophy, back to Charlottesville. And who do you think is going to be the most valuable player? I, I tell guess. you, this is the inaugural trophy. There's no name on that trophy. I think they had to call it the Wally Lundy trophy. <laughs> they might. Beautiful trophy. Kurt Smith getting sent to kick it away. It just has not been the day for the Mountaineers. And meanwhile, these young Cavaliers, my goodness, you would have to think that Al Gro, even in his wildest dreams, couldn't imagine his team maturing the way it did this season. I, I think he has done a wonderful job of bringing them along, kept the expectations low early, but with success came more expectations, and he's really helped them develop and mature. Well, Derek Smith returns that kickoff and the Mountaineer offense back on the field. It's been a great week here in Charlotte, and these teams have enjoyed a Thursday at the Lowe's Motor Speedway just up the road in Concord, North Carolina. The two teams had a chance to spend some time at the Richard Petty driving experience. The highlight of the day was the tire-changing competition between head coaches Al Grove and Rich Rodriguez for the visit to the Speedway, just one of many events that has made the Continental Tire Bowl a huge success, certainly for the fans, but also for these two teams who had a great time. I don't know if either one of those guys have ever changed a tire on their own car. Well, I don't know. Well, Rich Rodriguez was a walk-on of West Virginia. He might have. Quincy Wilson on the carry, Brian White on the tackle. Take a look at this uh, bio on Rich Rodriguez. Came to this school, to West Virginia, as a walk-on defensive back and made himself into a, a player. 54 career tackles, three bowl appearances. Rich Rodriguez doing an outstanding job. His team turning around from three and three and uh, nine last year. To nine and three this year. And Wayne, what's so important for both of these programs is neither one of them went to a bowl last year. To go to the bowl now, you get all those extra practices between the end of the season and when you go to your bowl. And for a program like Rich Rodriguez and West Virginia, they need those extra practices. They're so young that their players get so much better. Al Grow, the same thing. He's been able to take advantage of all that tremendously young talent he's got and develop on the lawn. Well, they had a recruiting class last February, Randy, that was ranked consensus, top five in the country. Many had that class ranked at number two. And Al said, we knew we were going to have to play some of those kids. We couldn't redshirt them all. Well, what was interesting to follow up on that point is Angelo Crowell, their all-everything linebacker, said that when Al Crow would talk to his team, and told the team, hey, these kids can play. These are young freshmen. They're talented. They can play. Angelo Crowell would say, you know what? We believed him because we know this guy knows talent. He's been in the NFL. They think he, he's all of a sudden a, an NFL god because he, he, what he says means so much to him. And they really bought into that system. And he was right. These young kids can play very well. He's been a part of Super Bowl championship staffs under Bill Parcells. Quincy Wilson. Part of the future for West Virginia, trying to escape to the outside. And again, Virginia just playing so well. Winborn made the stop of the play. Well, we mentioned Al Groh going to the biggest bowl of them all. A number of times he was a Super Bowl coach here with the Patriots under Bill Parcells in Super Bowl 31 against the Green Bay Packers. He also was part of a couple of Super Bowl winners while coaching linebackers with the New York Giants. That's the kind of credibility that makes sense. And he was wearing one of his Super Bowl rings in our meeting yesterday. Danny Embick, a quarterback, now for West Virginia. Embick, a redshirt freshman out of Jupiter, Florida, on this drive. 
Time winding down to the inaugural Continental Tire Bowl. And while the West Virginia Mountaineers have struggled in the game here today, overall, this has been one of the most successful starts to a bowl in the history of the season. In the history of college football. And Bick looking downfield. Got a man open, and the ball tipped away nicely by Winborn. <laughs> you know, these defenses, they're like sharks with blood in the water. You know, they don't want to give up anything, even though they're playing at a big lead. Well, so many times, especially with the score now 48 22, you, you have your backup players in there on both sides of the ball, and the defensive players that are the backups, they're trying just as hard as the starters. What do you think is going to happen here now? Oh. Now, this is a true sign of, of the NFL experience in the Bill yeah. Parcells of the 1980s. Yeah, Al Crow should not have been surprised by that. He had to know it was coming. Danny Embick on the roll. A little pump fake has to take it himself. He's a quick quarterback out of bounds. 46 seconds to go. What an impressive performance by this young Virginia squad. Al <laughs> Grote toweling himself out. One of the youngest teams in the country. 14 true freshmen have seen action this season for Virginia. 43 freshmen overall. 29 individuals are playing in their first year of college ball for West for Virginia. Well, what a what a pleasure to talk to yesterday. Also, they were very excited to be here. The teams, the players that we talked to, had a great week down here. And without having gone to a bowl last year, you missed that. Now you get a chance to go to one that you really didn't know anything about, this being the first year. And I don't think any of them had any idea how much they would enjoy the bowl. We should see the victory formation, and we have in dropping down a quarterback to run the clock. David Deloreal, a backup third string quarterback. Capital One player of the game. Wally Lundy, what a job he did. All purpose, 201 yards of total offense and four touchdowns. A true freshman. Well, and that almost could be a problem in itself. Where does this kid go from here? Yeah. Matt Schaub, the junior, he had to fight his way up that depth chart. Matter of fact, lost his job after the opener this season, regained it in the third week. And Al Crow, such a quick rise for a young program. And by young, I mean his program in just its second year to come in here and demolish the 13th ranked team in the nation. A team filled with upperclassmen in West Virginia. 48 22, the final score. Mike Gleason down to the field with Coach Al Crow. Mike? All right, thanks a lot, Wayne. Al, you told us yesterday because of your youth, you thought you'd have to have a superlative ball game to win it, especially 48 to 22. I guess you came pretty close to being superlative. Well, our players, every age, stepped up, really played well. And uh, we're planning on being in these kind of games for a long time and, and playing like this. And I think we learned a lot. But you know, this is a great day for everybody associated with this university. The, the tremendous fan turnout that we had, all the people who are watching us today, and we're just started. Rashid Marshall was the X factor. You said you had to stop him. You didn't care if Coburn maybe had 180 yards as long as he didn't break a long one. You actually took both out of the ball game. Well, we had a way we wanted to play the plan, and players did a great job of stepping up and doing that. You talk about all the freshmen on this roster. How about Lundy? You never dreamed he'd have four touchdown game. Well, he's some player. He's going to be a big-time football player. He just keeps his head on and listens to what we tell him. He's going to be something. Al, one last question. West Virginia prides themselves on being physical. They feel like the reason they were 9-3 and three is because they were more physical than the opposition. But you lined up and slugged it out from the outset. You know, I came from a pretty physical league. That's the way we're going to be. Congratulations, Al. All right, Wayne, let's go back upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Mike. I tell you, what a week here in Charlotte for the Cavaliers. They made the 280-mile trip from Charlottesville, and it was a good one. The final score, Virginia upsets West Virginia 48-22. We head back to the studio and Chris Fowler. All right, Wayne, thank you very much. Yeah, you know, Virginia goes down there. 
hammers the board team they haven't played in 17 years and with the young guys they have just a tremendous momentum in the offseason and next year they're gonna be one of the trendy teams that's gonna challenge the Florida States and NC States I think in the, in the ACC absolutely I think if you look at Virginia I was so impressed now if you look at this team they've won nine of their last 12 games that they've played in now and you mentioned offensively guys like Wally Lundy the freshman with over 200 yards of total offense Matt Shaw at quarterback I make a prediction now I know it's December Preseason 2003 ACC champions, Virginia, Mark. That's a stretch. Right. What a reach by you. Well, wow. Come on. <laughs> Nobody else has done it but Florida State, and how long? It I think it's the Virginia. Yes, I've that heard. is. No, no, he's already had ones before this, yes, believe it or not. Next year? Yes. <laughs> but but the, the key here is for Al Groh. When you look at a head coach that goes to a program two years ago, as Al, Al Groh did to Virginia, most coaches will play the seniors and they'll play the juniors that are there, and players are already recruited to make sure that the alumni is happy. We win a game, we go to a bowl game. That's not what Al Groh did. He played a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores this year. Guys he recruited, he recruited recruited a lot of great talent across the country and said, you're going to have an opportunity to play if you're good enough. Those players were good enough, and they played and played well today. And I think it's evident that you look at this program, Virginia is just nothing but a program that's on the rise. I mean, they're scary right now. All these kids that are playing are starters for freshmen and sophomores. So much talent in that area if you can continue to recruit like he has. I, I thought Magai Corso was the only guy who predicted like 2000. Or Vital does it too. What about West Virginia? Here's another team in this bowl season. It believes it has a real physical edge coming into a game that is just going to ram the ball down the throat of a smaller defense. Nebraska thought they could do it. Kansas State thought they could do it. It really hasn't worked out that way in this postseason. It hasn't worked out, and I think because a lot of teams had that extra time to prepare, and they can try some new schemes and things like that. But I think the worst thing that Rich Rodriguez did all during bowl weeks leading up to this game was say how his team deserved to be in a better bowl game. He thought they deserved to be in the Toyota Gator Bowl. He thought it was unfair that Notre Dame had that thing with the Big East that they got to go to the Gator Bowl. I think it does two things. First of all, it tells your team it kind of belittles the bowl game you're playing in. They sure. wonder, really, is it that important? And the other way, if I'm Al Groh, I stand up in front of my team and I say, hey, wait a minute, guys. This coach says they ought to be in a better bowl. You're not a, like, a good enough opponent. I, I, don't, I don't really understand that philosophy. And I know that that's not what he was trying to do. I'm just saying, don't ever, as a head coach do that. Be happier playing in a game. Tell your guys it's the most important game of your life. Don't ever say you should have been in a better bowl game. Bottom line is this. What are you looking at? Oh, Groh's defense for? went out there. They stuffed the run of West Virginia. They put them in a situation where they were backpedaling and they had to score a lot of points. And this isn't the type of offense that can come from behind and score points. That was the ball game. Once the defense stuffed Evan Corbin in the running game of West Virginia, this game is over. When you're one dimensional like that, if you take a team that's one dimensional out of what they do best, they cannot come back and they cannot win football games. That's all there is to this game. Virginia did a tremendous job of stopping the run and putting points on the scoreboard and, and making West Virginia. And Al Groh says, I come from a physical league of course, meaning the NFL. I hope he gets more physical on defense, but I don't want him to change his philosophy on offense. Continue oh, to do man. those trick plays. Do that fun stuff. He hates that. I love that stuff. I'm, I'm with you, Chris. That's yeah. great. It makes the game exciting. Don't get and away the from that, even yeah. if you get a better, you know, yeah. football Players Why love that. As, as a player, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's it, momentum It's part builder. of the game, but it can't be what you do offensively. It makes it fun, and it worked today because they hammer it's fun for you. West Virginia. College basketball coming up at the bottom of the hour. It's the Pepsi Holiday Classic. Damon Brown and Charlotte against... The Buffaloes of Colorado is coming up. Offense, we have to earn a lot of things. You know, we're not making a lot of big plays and uh, and things of that nature, but having all year, you know, we're more of a thing, team that has to have, you know, 12, 13 play drives. And we had a couple of those, but we had a couple of three, three and outs when we simply didn't execute. And um, they didn't really surprise us at all what they were doing defensively. Um, so it was just a matter of execution. What were they doing on offense? Well, I mean, we knew they were going to run a lot of trick plays. They ran, they ran uh, you know, the whole gamut, I guess, and, and they executed them well. You know, they just they kept us off balance, I think, really good uh, uh, offensively. And, and uh, we you know we didn't tackle well when we had a couple of chances to, to make a big play or make them punt. You know, we just we didn't tackle and didn't get them on the ground. Rick, you, you guys have been really good at not turning over the ball the last four games. Um, yeah. What do you make of the turnovers today? Well, the one Rashid just made a, made a made a bad decision, um, misread the coverage, and, uh, and the other one on a trick play, uh, we missed a block. We had the guy that was pressuring Phil on the reverse pass, that uh, that we missed a the block there and I got pressure on. So, you know, that one was you know wasn't as bad. We didn't think as, as the one Rashid. He just made a bad decision. He had read that coverage uh, correctly before, but that time he just. He didn't see the guy. And this is a game turned by the part return. Part of it, yeah. You know, it was, uh, 
you know, we wanted to come out and get a little momentum. And, you know, we, we always felt we were in the game. And the punt return took a little wind out of our sails, but still there was a lot of football to be played. So uh, it's just a shame because we've had – that's happened to us a couple times this year. And it was a, it was a low kick and not, not, uh, not covered very well. So, and obviously disappointed, Rich Rodriguez – Sees his Mountaineer team go down to defeat in today's Continental Tire Bowl, and this continues a trend. In fact, the last 10 bowl games West Virginia has played, they've managed just one victory, allowing over 33 points per contest. Today, they gave up 48 in their loss to Virginia.